You the tweets next time, Mr. Brown. Now, now, I swear you have like a master's degree to understand like J. Cole lyrics. Send me the tweets. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna go search on Twitter. God, I just seen one too. God damn it. Let me go. That should be I'll, I'll do it after the show. Funny. Asshole. All right. Oh, I'm gonna search higher level of intelligence. I bet you the first thing that shows up is J. Cole. Or we that back. movie. We we bite right. with limited oh I'm gonna do this real quick to get the get the audio there. We go, we starting on that. Um we are bike. Why? And, and we bite and we back. Yeah. Why'd you just do that? <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say? He just like did a big old like wet ass mouth cough inside the mic. <laughs> We're back. Yeah, the gold dust the gold dust ad lib. <laughs> Episode nine. <laughs> Grizzly on Focus podcast, man. We here, we live, we bike. Um, Somebody redo this intro. Shakur is a menace. What? I had it right there, and you just messed it up because I could have clipped it at that point. So yeah, no, real shit. How you doing, Tyrell? You in an interrupted mood today? How you feeling? I feel great. I feel great. It's been a great week. Oh really? Uh, oh, it's been really? what? It's been a... uh, okay. It's been a great week. Oh, man. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't want to go now. <laughs> Please. I got stage fright. Uh, it's been a great week. Uh, work's been good, you know. I went and got a facial today <clears throat> from the homie Mahalia. <laughs> Honestly, I wish Shakur would warn me last time we talked about the facial thing that it was going to be so fucking painful. I oh, thinking, just like, yeah, just my to, dick. Don't try to warn me now, bitch. I just thought about it. That shit sucks. Yo, she, I'm thinking it's going to be like 30 minutes of somebody massaging shit into my face, dog. She gets out the hook and starts digging into my skin to. To peel out the cheese butt out my nose and the like all the deep blackheads, you know, all yeah. the shit you see on like Dr. Pimple Popper. That shit's I was shit in there sucks. crying. I was in there yeah. crying. It was not good. But uh It's only bad on your nose because you know your nose is so damn sensitive. Yeah, that that's where it was. The nose was bad. I got a bunch of, you know, shit on my nose. Anyway, support the homie Mahalia. She's doing skin. She's getting uh pretty pretty niggas everywhere. You know, check us out on YouTube. Cause niggas is glowing this week. I just got it earlier today. I'm about to look like a fucking diva, nigga. Other than that, you know, shit's been good. <laughs> you sitting all prissy and stuff now. I feel you. Hell yeah, nigga. I, been, I got a purse. Huh? Keep going. When How did that Blake? part come in? Don't worry about it. How are you, Blake? I'm cool, man. I'm hanging out with my mom, man. It's been vibing, hey. kicking it. We watched a bunch of Survivor's Remorse today, so that was cool. Shows it. Uh, pretty good. How many I've, seasons? There was like four seasons of that? I think there's four. I think there's four. Okay. Um, that was Braun's show, wasn't it? It is, yeah. Um, and he's like, at least I'm, I'm only on episode. I think we just finished like the fourth episode. Um, minimal it signals and hints that LeBron has anything to do with the show. Um, I think I saw the main character had a pair of LeBrons on once. And mm. he had a, like a Nike shirt on once. And then there was like Kia in his driveway. That was... <laughs> but like you would have to be watching it, knowing LeBron yeah. is with those things, in order to um, yeah. know that it has anything to do with him. But uh, it's pretty good. Mike Epps is in it. Uh, he's been funny, so that was cool. I'm not trying to. We'll get to TV stuff in a minute because there's another Mike Epps thing to talk about. But um, that's funny. That is. Uh, other than that, it's been cool, man. Uh, wife runs a half Iron Man tomorrow. Runs, swims, and bikes a half Iron Man tomorrow. So what? what can, can you break that down for us? What is that? So, an Ironman is a triathlon, but it's a, like a triathlon on steroids. And I don't know the exact lengths of each of the segments, but um, okay. a half, the total mileage you do is 70.3. So, a hole is 140.6. Excuse me? Yeah. So, it's some combination of running, swimming, and biking for 70.3 miles. Um, <laughs> but she's down in Florida, um, about to do this tomorrow, so... But to wake up early tomorrow and watch her on these trackers. They got some live feeds too, so I'll be checking that out. Um, oh, post post that. We trying to support the the goat for sure. Y'all about to be sleep sleep. <laughs> it just starts at six a.m. Yeah. yeah, I gotta wake up early for work. Just post it. We'll we'll, we'll right. fight or something now. All right, that's cool. That's um, crazy. Well, send us uh, send her our well wishes and good lucks and all that shit. That's yeah, fucking it. impressive. Hopefully, that's I don't have shoot. to uh, go to Florida to scrape somebody off a beach. So. <laughs> yeah, somebody she beats up on the beach probably not nah, from exhaustion hopefully she does her thing man i'm, I'm, I'm confident miles. that's that's insane dog <laughs> driving 70 miles i get out the car and i'm woozy facts because <laughs> <laughs> with that's traffic nuts. you're talking about like an hour and a half probably oh yeah uh, that is nuts yeah but uh, 
it's been cool, man. Just kicking it, cooling, uh, all is well. Say, how you doing, Shakur? I'm good. Long ass day at work, but that's, that's about it with me. That special, just same old shit. Yeah. Same old, same old. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Um, how'd you, how'd you feel seeing that NFL schedule? Ooh. Uh, I talked myself into seven wins. Seven wins I saw in there. Okay. I have to look at it again, but yeah, no, I saw like seven wins on there. Mm. I didn't. Uh, I didn't go through and count our wins because I wanted to do it on here, so you guys could laugh at my optimism. <laughs> I didn't count That's my definitely wins. Definitely not gonna happen. So I got you. Uh, so our schedule is, is is high key tough. So we play the uh, we play the NFC the Chargers I should say as in we we play the NFC East this year, which is either going to be a cupcake or we're going to lose every single game. Uh, we open the season with the Washington Football Team. We game two, hey shout out game two. We play the Cowboys in LA. Me and uh, a couple of my coworkers are going down there for that game. Ooh, my wow. boy's a big Cowboys fan, so we are. Uh, that's the first. It'll be the second game in the new stadium with fans. The Rams play their opening week. Um, so, yeah, I'll you be seen in the, tickets I'll already be in the for that? <clears throat> yes. The tickets are going to be the last thing we buy. So, we, we got our flight book. We're looking at the Airbnb. And uh, tickets, I'm, I'm a big fan of buying sporting event tickets closer to the date. Because when people are trying to, like, scalp them and resell them, as you mm-hmm. get closer, they just drop the prices on them. Are you typically? <laughs> Are you worried about like your team outperforming expectations and then them being a lot better than tickets being higher? Because the Cowboys are nah, already like, a really popular team. We're coming off a bad year. That's true. So yeah, like uh, w- within my max, I don't think it'll get higher than that. But it's week two, so even like if we're good week one, we can't be that much better unless we beat the football team by seventy. And yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep. I am not worried about the Chargers doing that. No, I'm all not right. at all. I've, I've watched this team enough. Y'all forty ball them boys, man. Y'all Watch got, out. I think y'all got high expectations, though. I feel like people might think y'all might gonna be good this year. Fam, yeah. We got high expectations every year, and our outcome is not the same. We open the season, uh, our first, we have a bye week in week seven. Our first five games are the football team, the uh-huh. Cowboys, the Chiefs, the Raiders, the Browns, and the Ravens. Like, that's a that's a tough little stretch to open up with. Yeah, those are some good teams. Yeah, sure. We go into the Patriots, Eagles, Vikings, Steelers, Broncos, Bengals, Giants, Chiefs. Texans, Broncos, and then uh, finish up the year at the Raiders. Looking at at, at first glance, I'm seeing uh, I'm seeing ten wins, man. I'm seeing ten wins at first glance because I think I think we can beat the Raiders twice. I think we can beat the Broncos twice, which means we're probably going to lose both of those uh, series. The Steelers and the Vikings, we should beat. The Bengals, we should beat. The Giants, we should beat. We always get one off of Kansas City. And by always, I mean the last two years. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're fucking the Eagles up just because the, the Chargers know I can't have Tony beating my team. Um, yeah, I'm seeing ten wins. Uh. I'm seeing ten wins in a in a in a in a playoff spot. Oh, you know what? Hold on, I'm tripping. There's an extra game. I'm seeing eleven wins. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah, I'm seeing eleven wins. What's eleven wins put you at now? The one more win because that's I mean you're basically an old ten win team. You think that's not is that playoffs in AFC West? Uh, I think the AFC West usually has a good chance of putting two out because it's the Chiefs and then someone else. Um, two might be higher than eleven though. Potentially, I I'm just I don't know this schedule. Like we play the NFC East and the AFC North, which are two like not. Depending on the year, like those are divisions that you can run through pretty easily, or uh, are very tough divisions. So, yeah. being optimistic, eleven, twelve wins. I'm just, I'm assuming the Chiefs are going to win the division because the Chiefs always win the division, um, and that that offense is is a factor. But I, there is a chance, like I mean, shit like that only really lasts for so long. So, uh, hopefully, Patrick Mahomes slows down a little bit. I yeah, will you say hope Aaron Rodgers don't come over there. Yeah, I'll I'll put that's a lot right. of chips in, and y'all be in the second best team in that division. I'll, I'll say that's yeah, that's the floor and the ceiling for me. I'd be not, surprised yeah. if you're not the second best team. Yeah, I, I would agree. That I would be shocked if we it somehow end up better than the Chiefs. If we end up better than the Chiefs, it'll be because Justin Herbert turns out to be. Can he play Patrick better? Switch. Can he? <laughs> Is that, <are> you <laughs> He was fucking uh, nice last yeah, year. Yeah, is that possible? Uh, yes. 
I think he can because he he just had like basic rookie mistakes uh, and learning the offense. Like he came in week two as a starter, like didn't start as a starter right away. Um, I think he can play better. If he could play better, man, that's a league MVP, better. bro. Yeah, I I don't I don't think that's him. I don't think that's crazy. I really don't. I don't know if it's this year. I don't know if it's this year that that's him. But yeah. I don't think that's crazy to see him being a league MVP after with how good he looked last year in a in an offense that was not good. Like we did not have a good offense last year. Who did all. y'all get to retool that the offense? Nobody. We just have a different head coach. We kept our offensive coordinator. <laughs> 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 We got a different uh, we we got a different QB coach. Even though our QB coach last year was really good, uh, I'm just hoping this new we have Brandon Staley from the Rams as our head coach. So I'm hoping we get this uh, young Sean McVay guy, even though he's a defensive guy. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't fucking know. I forgot yeah, like, to I'm just hoping I, I'm hoping that the issues with our offense were Anthony Lynn because Anthony Lynn was a, a running back first guy, and we ran the ball like our coach was a running back guy. With run, run, pass, run, run, pass every single series, even though we have a quarterback who's throwing for uh, 4,500 yards and 30 or yeah, 29 touchdowns, it was still run, run, pass, like very predictable. So I'm hoping getting a new guy in that's like, no, nah, I'm not doing that shit will be, uh, that'll be our new vibe. We'll see. Huh. This ain't your granddaddy's NFL no more, man. You gotta this ain't it. your granddaddy's NFL. Okay. I just, I just know like the space that Herbert has <laughs> left to improve and like he's getting into. Very cramped space. If he if he steps into that space, like there's not a lot of I, that's that's true. But like, how many guys kicked the door in their rookie year looking like that? Like, and there's there's the uh, like Baker Mayfield who did, and then it's like okay, from there it's downhill. So that could be a reality. Or there's the nah, th- uh, there's Russell Wilson who came in and looked like that. And it's context like, oh, for better. Baker though, like he, he had new coaches and everything every single year until this last sure. year he had two in a row. Where but I'm just saying like and. Justin's got that too. Like he's got a new coach. He looked good. Got a new coach. Not the one making the, the plays. Players aren't new. <laughs> you guys got weapons though. Like that definitely helps him out. Yeah. yeah. I'm I'm excited. I think I think Justin definitely has room to grow. Just like watching him and the, some of the decisions he makes, I think we have room to grow. Hopefully, getting a younger coach in there. And on a lot, so much of our shit came down to like you lose. We lost every single game other than the Patriot game by a, a <laughs> score by a score <laughs> so it's like the if our defense is slightly better and it's not oh yeah every game is 32 30 like our defense steps yeah. up a little bit having derwin james could be better and help. the numbers not be as good too like, that's possible. Yes, that's also true that's oh, true. That, that patriots yeah. game had y'all points in for sure like 12 because <laughs> even though y'all lost all the other ones <laughs> no, by three points yeah <laughs> we were like, yeah, that stupid ass stat of like, oh, this team point differential wise, we're third in the league. We just have the worst record in the league somehow. Yeah, I fucked that game. Was Cam? Yeah, was Cam it, Newton playing that game? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I didn't Cam, know. I didn't Cam, know. Cam Newton. Cam Newton didn't even look good. Nothing about the still play too. Good. We just looked fucking awful. Uh, we looked like. Dumb. I want to rewatch that game. I want to see what the fuck happened. And, and it's funny because going into that game, the conversation <laughs> around it was like, you know what, Bill Belichick does to rookie quarterbacks. So I'm like, he hasn't seen this rookie quarterback yet. He hasn't. He did. He Doug, I want to see how they put up their points. Yeah, go suck his dick while you're at it, bitch. <laughs> Yeah, Google, Google, ha ha, bitch. Let's talk about the Jags. <laughs> they lost fifteen games in a row. Oh, Blake Jordan, is laughing too. Sakura seen one team in this count or one win this calendar year. You fucking. Oh my god. god. <laughs> oh, no, shit. we're watching that. Look at me. I got the game taking, cash in the drive, y'all. I'm watching that. Imagine taking Sundays off of work to see your team get smoked fifteen weeks in a row. That's why I worked a lot of Sundays last year. Jackass. After like week six, I was like, "Yeah, fuck this." I'm gonna... <laughs> I'd rather do anything else. Hey man, you missed your chance at some fun last season, Shakur. You could have went there and gotten the pool in the stadium probably for cheap, with your pants on and everything. Damn, probably. Yeah, it's up now. I'm tickets is high. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm going All to right, that sure. game on Halloween though. I'm in there. Yeah. Can I come? Sure. If you start being nice to me by Halloween, yeah, sure, I'll take you with me. It's a big ass. I am having an audition for my friends to see who, what friend I'm going to take. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> no, like, I'm done. So what's, what, what is the, what, what's the criteria of the audition? Uh, being just nice. Who, just who's nicest to you? Yeah, who, who treats me the best, honestly. I have a podcast with you. 
Yeah, but I also like live with one of my other friends that's in the run again. He kind of puts a, you know, shelter for me. Mm. Lets me live here for pretty cheap. Mm. So, that's so you're going to take your sugar daddy with you, is what you told me. I won't say anything like that. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's kind of what you just described. You got to protect the homestead. I'm not going to disrespect my Chinese not... friend during Asian Heritage Month, but it is what it is. If that's the type I'm of time you're on. I'm surprised you didn't right this month. Huh? Nothing. Um, this this month? Yeah, it's May. Yeah, it's May. It's, uh, Asian, it's, Asian, Asian, it's Asian Pacific Islander Heritage Month. I know. Month. Breast Cancer Awareness Month and Black History Month. Remember when the NFL fake cared about breast cancer? They still do. What are you talking about? Yeah, they still do. What, which one did they uh, stop giving money to for the social? That was the uh, the military shit, right? Remember how they was talking yeah. about? Yeah. Okay, that was the military shit. They weren't the giving NFL them had money. to pull like uh, you know you know all these companies are capping because I found out this week that uh, Asian hold on it's Asian Pacific Islander American Heritage Month. I think is that the order it goes in. Either way, that shit's been around since 1980, and this month was the first time I've ever heard of it. Well, I heard about it maybe three years ago, yeah, maybe. Well, Oh, I hadn't heard of it then. This yeah. was the first year I heard of it. And they can be cabinet if they want to. If they care or not, if they put money to, to actually help some people because shit's been that's bad a, out yeah, there. That, that, that's that's, that's all that. I don't care if you actually care about the money you're putting up, but if you're putting up and it's helping people, uh, keep putting it up. I need, that's how people I were need, talking about, uh, like, when the NFL, like, you know how you buy all that month during the military, like, appreciation month, where when they start doing all that, or, like, mm-hmm. breast cancer month? You, like, look in the fine print, that should be, like, 0.3% of all mint certain. <laughs> Well, in the thing with because uh, this was a big thing when it when it all came out, the, it wasn't that the NFL cared about the military; is the military cared about the NFL? They were using it for yeah. advertising, and that's probably still the case because you're oh, seeing yeah, for sure. you, you see it way more than you would else wise. Hey, like you, you don't, I don't feel like I see commercials. military commercials anywhere other than ESPN and during football games. I see them on like uh like YouTube and sometimes YouTube TV, but oh well, yeah, okay, yeah, YouTube, yeah, yeah, yeah but it's it's um. Yeah, that that's a big ass advertising platform for them to not only give you a bunch of money, but then um, advertise for you basically too. That doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. Like there was only one way they were getting out there like that. Um, but fuck giving money. Go sit in uh, go sit in some legislative meetings or something. Change change the laws. Y'all got all this money and all this power. Go go change the laws. How about that? Yeah, you. Can, well, this, are we talking about helping out the These companies want to lobby against uh, like. Yeah, I don't really want to pay my taxes. Yeah, uh, go go stop somebody from beating up an Asian granny. How about that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Move on, Blake. Take that, Elon Musk. I want to see you <laughs> go to the Bronx and stop some of these ass whoopings. Yeah, you bitch. Yeah, you <laughs> if you really care. Shit, you bitch ass. Yeah, yeah, go ain't... fucking beat somebody up. People out here DDT and Asian people for no reason. That's fucked up. They on a fucking run. It's sad, bro. <laughs> that shit sucks. Every day on my I... YouTube... I got a new one from New York, like, and it's always somebody's granny. You know how fucking mad I'd be if somebody beat my grandma, up? like, not even if it was for a race or nothing like that. If I found out my grandma got up. beat up, I got a pistol, nigga. I'm a concealed yeah, carrier. Yeah, I'm no, scaring it's like, that bitch out. You don't, you don't. I mean, I'd imagine an old person. If you were just trying to make them fall over, you don't have to hit them like more than once. No, but then they're like, really fight? Just hit me though. That's like, kind of... Can you finish your sentence without laughing? Are you? <laughs> no, this is how I deal with all serious topics. Ask <laughs> nah, my wife. I, I, I don't. I can't <laughs> do shit without. Yeah, all you gotta do is just hip check them. They're like fucking roundhouse <laughs> kicking and like all kind of shit, bro. This shit's insane. It's fucked up. It's fucked you up. caught doing that shit. You deserve to go to jail. Keep your fucking hands to yourself. And if I see you touching somebody's uh, abuela or uh, whatever our Asian brother and sisters calls their grandmas, I'm beating your fucking ass. How about that? Nah, I'm Nina call Mac him and Tommy beat your ass. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, this thirty guy had a question for you, buddy. Nah, I'll be beating up nobody sensei. I can't. I don't want to miss and get involved in a hate crime. <laughs> <laughs> Shakur, how do you feel about the Jaguar schedule, fam? Hey, we got y'all week two of the preseason, win. man. That's just me being crazily optimistic. Mm, you said how much? What'd you say? I saw seven wins. Oh, I don't you know, think that's crazy. I'll you know, week two is going to get billed as Taysom Hill versus Tebow, right? Jesus week two is different. Of the preseason, bro. Oh. Because you know it's going to be the tune-up for Taysom. See, like, oh, can he really do it? Can he play? Mm-hmm. And Urban's going to whip out the Tebow package. Probably have mm-hmm. him try to do some Taysom plays. Mm-hmm. Bro. I, that's, that's the first week of the preseason. I got week two. Week one, they got the Browns. Yeah, no, we got uh, yeah. 
Yeah, no, we, yeah, week two, we got the Saints. And yeah, we're over, there, too. Over, under, how many uh, times the word gadget is used by the commentary team um, in week two of the preseason? Yeah. 12. 12. <laughs> I like 12. Yeah. I can see that. I think it goes over, too, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh, either gadget or, like, trick. Trick. Trickery yeah. or mm-hmm. trick players. Mm-hmm. Or Package. Some sorts. I'm a big fan of the trick. Oh, yo, the Jacks got an easy-ass start of the schedule. God damn. Dude, like Texans, a- Broncos, Cardinals, Bengals, Titans, Dolphins. What are some, like, narrative yeah. games, like, you see on the Jacks schedule, like, you think are going to – be the, the topic uh, of discussion during the week or whatever. Well, week one, hopefully, uh, Deshaun Watson doesn't play. I hate, I hate to do it, man. He's black and I'm black, but hey, man, I'm trying to get these. We should, we should really celebrate the Tyrod Taylor getting an unchecked opportunity. Oh yeah, we're dubbing them if he plays. So <laughs> yeah, uh, narrative game. We have Cincinnati. Cincinnati and the Jets, like all former yeah. one overall picks playing each other. Yeah, it's a lot of big uh, lottery yeah. time. Yeah, no, yeah. You guys play the Patriots. You know what Bill Belichick does? Rookie QBs, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> week seventeen. Uh, the uh, see, that's the problem though. It's it's week seventeen, so who knows like what will be of the Jaguars? Yeah, like, what will be, be of like the, the Patriots? Too. So you yeah, never know. Sure. Yeah, yeah. We we played the Patriots last year in like week fifteen, so it didn't really didn't really make a difference. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, uh, only narrative game is. Yeah. Uh, I can see week three Jets, so we can see how uh, Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson look against each other. Yep, no, that'll and be the then, one. Yeah, that's gonna be one. That's gonna be a big one. Shit, that's about it, honestly. Uh, maybe the Colts see how uh, Carson Wentz looks in the new new situation against him. I don't think it'll be y'all easy see, on for the uh, Carson Wentz narrative game. Did y'all see Zach Wilson's mom wilding on the internet this week? I saw her. Uh, I think I saw what you're talking about. Keeping it consistent. Okay, that's the only question I have. She big Marjorie Taylor Green energy. Hey, you oh, know, yeah, I did see that. Okay, I know what you're talking about. So she said, uh, "Just because I said, voted for Trump and some some else don't mean I'm racist or something." <laughs> was it the that? When your son behaved around black men was uh, troubling. Did uh, she say that? I didn't see that part. Okay, so I, I I saw the part about the it was like the they had like mask police or something. She said, "Yeah, Disneyland or something like that." And then she had another one where, yeah, she Snapchat is for whores. <laughs> so now hold on, man. Kind of she said that, but uh, she's not clearly anymore. on it. She's she's clearly on it. That's kind of wild. Anyway, but it is. It, was that like, statement like, out of left field for for you guys? It's like, oh, I'm. What, where could she be getting this from? No, absolutely not. It's just in the context of all <laughs> You can't be doing this. Funny. Yeah, no. Nah, that's kind of wild. It's like, mom, you got to shut How up. How dare you? <laughs> she, said, she said some wild shit about, like, uh, Mormons are the only group uh, a group of people who are allowed to be, like, questioned about their religion and their background. She's like, getting all you... that off this week, or these are old ones that came up? Those were all on the same Instagram story. Mm-hmm. You didn't check that? Like, ah, Damn. Bro, yeah, she's wilding, bro. No, these were I did, these were all this week. She was talking about dog. This crazy. I'm like, I was like, damn, I haven't seen this. This ain't no story or nothing. Like, this is crazy. Yo, I just want my. If I ever get famous, I want my mom to not be on the internet at all. She Good can help bad. you, Brand. She can be endearing, like uh, DeAndre Hopkins' mom. Like she helps him out. Like this she's is, endearing. This, this is facts. This is facts. For yeah. sure. But let, let let me usher that in. A couple years into my career, don't don't yeah, pop on the ground. Let me be good first. <laughs> Especially after the only video we've seen of Zach Wilson uh, around coloreds is him being very afraid of the peace signs they're throwing up. <laughs> that boy was ready to run into a closet. I don't know what to do with my hands. <clears throat> anyway, uh, speaking um, of BYU not, quarterbacks, Blake. I have a wow, another thing on the Zach Wilson topic. Um, this week, the Mariners debuted the number four prospect in the MLB, uh, Jerry Kelenic. Um I think they have another game tonight, actually, but he, they did a hype video for him um, that they put on their YouTube channel where there was like just him talking and like a little bit of his family and stuff like that before like before his big big debut and he has big Zach Wilson energy <laughs> like and you might think they're the same person type energy <laughs> oh boy and he's going to a black ass baseball team all of a sudden yeah I mean it wasn't nothing like that just like arrogant cocky oh, okay. like uh, 
Disney uh, movie might be the okay. villain uh, quarterback type of dude. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, he had he had that look. That picture you showed us. Disney was his butt throwing yeah. a ball through the uh, Earth's core. Yeah, he he, he was I like talking it. about like he was like telling um telling the teacher when he's a little kid like. I'm going to be a professional baseball player. He's like, no, you used to pick a career off the sheet. He's like, no, I'm not going to pick any of these. I'm going to be a professional baseball player. And he's like, I told my mom, I'm not picking these. I'm going to be a professional baseball player. <laughs> you know how annoyed I'd be as a teacher? Like, yo, bitch, just pick one. Can I'm trying to help you out. I'm not trying to say you can't do this, but like, yeah. God damn, let's work on something else and in the meantime. The, that's the kid that grows up like, man, my teachers told me I never amount to anything. Yeah, because you wouldn't pick a job, nigga. Yeah, they told you don't go with the two percent option. Like, pick pick some shit you can actually work for and achieve. And, yeah. and you still have like barely one. made it. Shit. Yeah, pump the brakes. Pump <laughs> the brakes. My boy. By the way, man, I'm excited about his career. But um, on to the, the yeah the the Saints uh schedule. Um, I ah man, so I'm gonna walk down this. So week one we got Green Bay. I don't know what to make of that at the moment. Um, it does not mm-hmm. seem like they are working towards keeping their Hall of Fame all-time best player. So, if they lose him, we might lose about four points. Yeah. (laughs) Because that's still a really good team. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Then we got Carolina, Dub, New England. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, why do we all play New England this year? What the hell happened? Yeah, I don't know. That's how, how is that possible? They're playing two divisions. Huh. It's an extra game. Anything can happen. Oh, yeah, that is true. Is that the, the extra, extra for us? That is the extra. Yeah. That's the only one that's not the and, AFC South or um, NFC East. Yeah, and that's the same for us. Okay. And Shakur's team played that division. Yes, sir. Hmm. Okay, we got um, the Giants week four. I'd say that's a dub, so I'm at one for sure dub right now. Uh, Washington. Week- the Giants are an easy dub like that. The Giants, what, they got... Giants stink. Don't yeah. they got like a good defense though? They have a good everything. They just can't win games. Mm. I don't even think they have a good quarterback. Uh, he's this could be a year for right. Daniel Jones, but he got all the weapons now. Yeah. He's serviceable, ain't good. Keep keep doing though. I like DJ. Um, Washington week five dub. That's two. That's a tough two one. Though. I pick you. Yeah, it's a playoff team. You you is right. Um, Seattle. I mean, at Seattle week seven. Don't mm, like that. You should fly up here for this game so we can all get drunk in public and beat somebody up at the Seattle team. Wild expensive, sir. No, I don't got money. After this right. Dodgecoin jump off. Um, I was about to say, yeah, you might be a millionaire by the end of the weekend. Yeah, I'm already up a hundo. Let's go. Uh, against Tampa, L. Against Atlanta, dub. Y'all beat the ass last year, though. <laughs> we had Drew Brees last year. <laughs> yeah, you might be able to throw some gadget shit together, you know what I'm saying? How many gadget plays are you going to get on? <laughs> all of them. Okay. <laughs> Every one of the plays. Jameis has a revenge game, you know? Oh, shit. He better not see the field. <laughs> Actually, he might be on the field. I don't know. I can't even say I mean, right now. It's way too hard there's to a good, Yeah, there's a potential by, like, week five, Jameis is the starting quarterback. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's going to be interesting to see, like, he has a quarterback situation. That's what I want to see. It's not going to be interesting for me. It's going to be painful. Um, we got <laughs> Tennessee. Tennessee, uh, which is week 10. Uh, that's an L. Philadelphia, week 11. Probably another L. Buffalo, week 12, another L. Um, Dallas, week 13. Dub. That's at four now. New York, week 14. Dub. Tampa, week 15. L. Miami, week 16. L. Carolina, week 17. Dub. And Atlanta, week 18. I'll take that. So I got us seven of them things. Wow. Seven and ten. Damn, seven? For real? Wow. Yeah. You don't think you guys can beat Philly? Philly fucking sucked last year. No, I don't. Hmm, all right. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm interested to see how it turns out. Because I was definitely not expecting a seven win from looking at that schedule. But I thought you were going to say something nuts. I swear, I like, a couple weeks ago, I swear to God, you said, like, 12 or 13. I didn't say a number. <laughs> I thought it looked good. Um, but the problem is, a lot of these teams were, like, fringe playoff teams or playoff teams. And um, we are entering a situation where <laughs> one quarterback we have, like, didn't he? He set the NFL record for turnovers. 
Yes, yes this is true. Yep, so we have that. But also and... threw 30 touchdowns with 5,000 yards. Don't forget that part. Oh, he did that. He did that. The arm is big league. He ain't going <laughs> to lie about it. Um, decision just making, not so much. Very much accuracy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we just came from like the most accurate quarterback of all time. So it's kind of it's, it's necessary. Um, and then the other option is a guy who his best thing is not his throwing. It's his running. So Michael Thomas is going to request a trade by week three. <laughs> Or, James is gonna throw a, <laughs> throw a slant through the back of his neck. He's gonna be furious. He's gonna be indicted for a murder. It's one of the two. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Oh man, we uh, yeah, we did not we did not do right by him, but I don't think we were able to do that this offseason, anyways. And there's still the nah. chance that we end up with the boy from Green Bay, which I guess we can just transition to that since that was kind of brought up on my thing. Wait, what? That's being <laughs> talked about. What? What do you think you guys could send to uh, Green Bay? Um, to th- someone... They're training him out of conference, man. They're not training him within the NFC. What does it matter I don't at think, that point, though? I don't think that's going to happen. They don't, don't want to see them in the playoffs. It don't matter. They don't help. Think, yeah, I think if you trade Aaron Rodgers, you can't just bank on going to the playoffs, though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, if the Packers make the playoff without him, then that they they outperform their expectations probably. Like, yeah, and they don't give a fuck about who they. I don't think that where he gets traded matters so much as like what are you giving up to get him? What do you think is the trade that gets you Aaron Rodgers? Yeah, because like look at um, this this team is not moving with the same energy that like the Chiefs moved when they moved on from Alex Smith. Like they're not confident in Jordan Love like like they should be. It doesn't. It doesn't seem that way. Yeah. At least we haven't gotten any of the like leaks of uh, Devonte Adams. Like, man, that boy is good. We've gotten. <laughs> I'm gonna have to rethink my contract situation if I don't have Aaron Rodgers here. Yeah, we haven't gotten any of the, the leaks. It's like, yeah, but but like you you know how when teams want to move on from somebody, it's like no, God, the backup is good for sure. And we haven't. Because we were hearing the, when uh, the Brett Favre transition was going on, we was hearing things about like uh, Aaron Rodgers a little bit. So. I, see, I definitely see where you're coming from, for sure. Yeah. I just, wait, so, so no, wait, but Blake, what really, though, what do you think you guys can give up to get Aaron Rodgers on the same? Um, so yes, somebody, tell me, sir. Just picks? No, it's not me. It's not me. It's not me. So I, I don't know how okay. this works. But I saw one earlier uh, this week that I was going to search for. I started talking. Um, I think it was two first. Um, I think Carlos Ruiz and Jameis, and I think maybe a second, too. So yeah, I'm I'm banging the phone on them if they call me with that offer, that's unless that's the trade. only offer, which I can't imagine. Wait, Carlos is Ruiz, two first round picks, okay, a second round pick, okay. Carlos Ruiz and James Winston. That doesn't sound bad. But it's like it's not Carlos Ruiz was a first like, round lineman. Yeah, those those picks aren't going to be high because their yeah, line is fine though. We can always use another one. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you, you can never have too many good linemen for sure. Because you got to figure it's got to it's got to work out cap wise too, and like we yeah. can't send them that much, and they can't take that much. So yeah, that's true. Is there like a limit on how many picks you can like put in a trade or exchange? Not to um, my knowledge, because that Robert Griffin trade from uh, the Rams or whatever, I think they gave up like four oh, or five. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, trade. you you could put everything in there. <laughs> yeah, and this man's like north of thirty five years old too, ain't he? So like. I think that's pretty reasonable. Like I hear you, but he did literally just win MVP. They don't really seem to care like that much. That's insane. They drafted Amazing. a quarterback last year. <laughs> yeah, that was dumb for sure. Yeah, that was yeah, stupid. yeah. It is it, it it is hard to even say like that's not a good trade because I have no fucking clue what they want for him because they don't seem to really value him a ton. Like even when he's like, yeah, I really don't want to be here. We haven't gotten a statement from the Packers like. We're doing what we can to repair the relationship or anything like that. Like, we're going to make things right. It's just like, yeah, okay. Talk your shit. The, the GM yeah. said that he's not getting traded, but, I mean, you've heard yeah, that before. Say that. Yeah. yeah. we Odell was not getting traded five days before he got traded. Yeah, yeah that's true. Because they just gave that extension, too, when they traded. Is that... I would just I, I just love chaos, period. So I'd love for Aaron Rodgers to go somewhere. I'd just trade I'd him at this point. Like, if, if all this stuff is yeah. real, which I'm – like, it seems like it is. It doesn't seem like it's bullshit. It, it doesn't like it's made up like that. Um. I would just trade him. Like I would, if if that offer from the Saints came, or if maybe you got a better one from another team, I would trade him. It's not worth it at this point. Like it's, it's really not worth it. You're in the news for the wrong reasons. No one's like, no Packers fan is talking about their season being optimistic. They're talking about are we gonna have Aaron or not. Like, get rid of him. Start investing in your first round pick and hyping him up and giving him the the opportunities and the 
making like the players focus on him as QB one and um, go from there. Because right now, like you're not helping anything. Like people don't know who to like call up to get throws in with right now. Like, <laughs> yep. They yeah. They Aaron Rodgers was I guess calling free agents that were considering going to Green Bay and saying I'm probably not going to be here. Like going out of his way to let people know he wasn't going to be there. Yeah. And that when that group chat shit leaked where he called him Jerry Krause in the group chat, uh, like that clearly has to either come from him or somebody very close to him. Like I can't imagine Aaron Rodgers is in like the all offense group chat. He's probably in a group chat with like five people on the team. So if that yeah. comes out, yeah. like, he put that out. Yeah. And he and their their GM is not Jerry Krause because Jerry Krause put together a team that won six championships. Yeah, Jerry Cross got the bad rap on IMO. But, uh, that, it, the last he did. Yeah. They, he broke us up after we won six and everybody was on the decline. For, <laughs> Jordan had no knees time. left. He was like, why didn't you sign my boys back? <laughs> yeah. Get the fuck out of here. Hey, I, I, for chaos sake, I'm sure there was no way it would happen, but I feel like the talent is there to be traded. The picks are there. I would love to see Ben, or not Ben, Aaron Rodgers get traded to uh, Pittsburgh. Like, I feel like the offense is good and they have enough shit there that they could give up stuff and still be good. It would piss Ben off, uh, but they would immediately start winning. Like, they'd probably win that division. I like it if, like, the NFL just existed on paper. But, you know, like, in yeah. in reality, like, you yeah. got your um, emotions and all that franchise halt. Like, yeah, the dude that's yeah. been the state face of your franchise for the last 20 years, like, you're not going to do that to him. <laughs> you trade for another guy that's his age. Yeah. But just fucking nice. After y'all just had, like, uh, whatever, not really a back and forth, but, you know, it was a discussion whether or not he's going to come back and then you agree to some stuff this offseason. Like, yeah. you can't do that. Now. What's, he, what's he supposed to be making this year, I wonder? 30 something. Oh. He signed like a regular contract, I believe. He's getting paid 30 this year. Jesus. Oh. If, if you have like a, a for sure starter NFL quarterback, they're not cheap. Ooh. Actually, no. He signed a one year, $14 million deal. That's yeah, not I bad. Say, I thought it was like oh, 15. Wow. Yeah, that's not bad at all. It's mostly guaranteed. So yeah, 12 point, uh, yeah, 12.9 guaranteed. <laughs> that's not bad. And they can let him go after this year. Yeah. This he will be gone. Oh wow! His base salary is a million dollars. He got a fifteen million dollars signing bonus, so they could probably cut. They could cut him if they wanted to, and not really. No, this opposite. Never mind. They can't. Thirty-five million dollars in dead cap. God yeah. damn. Never mind. When it's um, it's it's the the non guaranteed that you can just cut and get rid of. Guaranteed, you cannot like signing bonus. You can't just cut and it's it disappears. Yeah, I thought they just had already given it to him. Uh, damn, that's crazy. Anyway, yeah. So you guys are both looking at sev- predicting seven win uh, seasons for your team. It's hard to do, yeah, man. Correct. NFL is like so chaotic. Oh, for Injuries, sure. COVID, yeah. like you know, one injury, and it's yeah. Because yeah, you don't I know predict- like what division is gonna be nice like before. Like some teams just be filthy. Yeah, yeah. I predicted eleven wins for the Chargers for the past. Uh, Seven years, I think, and we've had eleven wins once. Yeah, and so. it's like the Saints had like I think what thirteen wins last year. Okay, you can't. No, you cannot yeah. realistically sit down as a fan and like predict your team's going to do that. Like you can't look at a schedule and say that. I don't. I don't know. No. I feel like you. Can't. I feel like it's easier with the NBA. The the NFL like one injury really derails everything, and like or just one freak season from a player that doesn't make any sense or a freak game. Like you play Ch- Ch- if you're the Eagles and you play Chase Claypool and he has six touchdowns on you, it's like. The fuck were we supposed to do? Like there was or, nothing we could do. About and that. yeah, it's like oh, yeah. NFL rosters on paper. It's so hard to predict what they're going to do because you remember like the the year the um when the Eagles got like Namdi right. Like you would have thought they'd have been mm-hmm. better than they were, and it's like best team ever on man. The dream team with their name. Yeah, it's like you can't. You don't know how things are going to play out. You are right. Chargers winning eleven games. Okay. Uh, on the subject of the NFL, Jamal, your guy. FSU guy, Kelvin Benjamin was trying out with the uh, with the Giants today as a tight end, which mm. just makes me think he is probably the size of a left tackle. Like, <laughs> <laughs> if they're like you're not a wide receiver anymore, you're a tight end. They're probably like you are fucking huge. I wonder if someone if they got a picture of him anywhere. Oh, my boy, remember no, like, I haven't was, seen, I looked. I have. He not wasn't bad anymore. like his first year or two years. Whatever. He was oh, good no. for a couple years. Yeah, yeah. like he wasn't bad. He was just, Cam was like, I want to they... throw a bunch of nine routes. And he was like, bro, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> you mean a nine on the menu? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I ain't ready out there to grab that. <laughs> it's, it's almost impressive t- to see an NFL player get that big because, like, if you think about, like, I'm prefacing it, like, obviously not the same. But when we were in high school playing football, like, the practices, 
just regular everyday life and then the games, you could kind of eat whatever the fuck you wanted and your body would like you wouldn't gain weight. Damn, at I all. never thought about this. But so Kelvin Benjamin, like you gotta be putting some shit down. He's gotta be gaining eating, weight. Eating, eating, boy. <laughs> eating. Just, like on a date, uh, if he if you're going through an NFL practice, I feel like you're probably burning fifteen hundred calories. Yo, what and, is he doing? And he's going to, he's going back home and putting down five K. Bro, think, remember how nice Annie Lacey was? Oh my god. Yeah. No, he's like, a running back. He's yeah, running more than just about best. anybody else to practice. You know how much food he got to be putting down every day? Bro, Eddie Lacey was fucking nice, yeah. though. He, hey, for he a big be, running back, he has like he had a quick ass spin move. Like, he was kind of nice. I fucked with Eddie. practices in like two days and shit. Niggas would eat like the entire McDonald's menu, go practice, and feel hungry afterwards. You gotta be doing some damage. You think Kelvin Benjamin is go home and like pour like a fun size bag of Snickers into a, a blender and make a fucking smoothie? <laughs> he eats that shit like cereal, just put some milk in there. Like Kelvin, like his doctor's like, I don't know how you're not diabetic. This doesn't make any sense. Like, <laughs> Bro, yeah. I I I'm sh- I don't understand how athletes that are active can be that big and continue to gain weight. Like, I've heard athletes say, like, yeah, it's, it's, I can't really lose weight like that during the season. I can't really gain weight. Like, what you come in as is what you are. Like, he's, he's doing some wild shit to, to be that big. I don't, maybe, maybe it was like his decision or whatnot, but I don't understand how, why he didn't go to the tight end earlier. Like, why is it just now with him coming back in the league? Like, I felt like he should have been tight end a minute ago. And like, he had the size advantage, of course, a wide receiver or whatever, but. He could have been Kyle Pitts before Kyle Pitts, man. I feel like yeah, if he'd have been in college and then seen Darren Waller play in the pros, he'd have been like, oh no, yeah, let me, I'm gonna go do that. I feel like you made the point about like dudes like Andre Drummond, where it takes something to humble you, yeah, before you realize that he's like, I've been a receiver my whole life, and I'm sure even in at at FSU, like leading up to that point, he was probably untouchable at wide receiver. Like no one was probably faster than everybody he went up against too. Still, even at his size, yeah. Yeah. Even at FSU, it was like, okay, nobody can do anything. And then as soon as you get to the league, it's like, dude, we, I can walk next to you and I can jump just out of you. So this doesn't chubby really ass. Come here. It's a big ass out of town. So, I mean, <laughs> uh, for anybody who who doesn't know who Kelvin Benjamin is, while you're listening to this, never please go look him separation. up. Please go look him up. That is the biggest wide receiver I've ever seen in my life. He probably life. got like he the is. best hand eye coordination of all time because all his kids are hella contested. <laughs> <laughs> it's putting food in his mouth, boy. No, that is. God, stop. Stop. <laughs> That's why he's trying to make a comeback. He's like, niggas run out of money. I ate myself out of house. I, I heard Cam launched a McChicken 20 yards. Kelvin caught it one hand. <laughs> man, man. You are dumb. The legend. He, he, man, he was McChicken. nice before like he started getting adjusted down on Madden and shit, too, because he had the size. Yep. He was nice on Madden. Ooh. You get a tall receiver with strength on And Madden was looking at fat as strength, so they kept giving him, like, 97 strength at receiver. It's like, I'm that's not you. true. Boy, before I had, like, league pass and was able to see, like, games all over the place before I got streaming, too, Madden, like, ruined my perception of players. Like, I'd be surprised oh, when, yeah. like, they find out, like, oh, they're getting cut. Like, why? Like, he's nice, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, a, that's fucking two Ks on that for me for some NBA player. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Young, Josh. My, my, Jan Vesely was a goat on 2K and bro, he could shoot on 2K somehow. Hell yeah. Yep. You'd have, you would have swear that Jalan with, was with coming. Year shit. What do you say? <laughs> 2K is just real bad with the rookie year shit. Like if a guy oh, hasn't God. played any games, 2K assumes they're Michael Jordan of their position. Yeah, that's true. Like Julius Randle, his rookie year, I used to play with the Lakers, obviously, and it was like, God, is this fucking uh Kevin Garnett playing on our team? I can't. I still don't like him on the game because he can't like shoot like he does in real life. No, not but it, in two years after they finally adjust, now that he's shooting forty percent from three, he's going to be a ninety-eight th- uh, three-point shooter or something. Wait, yeah, that. two years when he flows down, like when he's not yep. playing at this level anymore. Like, of course, they're going to get all of a sudden they're going to shoot down the game. Yeah, it's annoying. Um, so next story we got to cover my doppelganger, Juwan James. Does he look uh, like you? Was <laughs> I remember without, that. I remember without me having hair, drafted. Yeah, without me having hair. People were sending me that picture when he got drafted. Like, is this your? Do you guys know each other? Um, but yeah, he was the first. Blake. Blake, it's not that funny. Blake's is, Blake's is Yo. Like Can we record? 
Blake uh, is a bitch. Anyway, Juwan James is the first victim of uh, teams trying or players trying to work out away from away from the facility in the NFL this year, which the NFL came out and said, like, if you get hurt away from the facility, we're not paying you. My man tore his ACL a week ago, and the Rams or the Broncos cut him today and voided his ten million dollar salary. Because my man was working out, not at the Broncos facility. And the Broncos had another player today uh, who they were planning on trading tear his ACL away from the facility. And he is likely not getting paid either. Which is shitty because, like, if I'm just lifting weights at home and I tear a bicep, like, is that not covered? Nigga, I should be working out, right? And I, I kind of get where the league is coming from. Like, we don't want y'all just going with any trainer, doing whatever, working yeah. out, getting hurt. Uh, but. W- you would want your players keeping themselves in shape. So I'm not really too sure how I feel about uh, this. This is just another example of the, um, the well, the NFL does not act in the best interest of the players. It acts in the best interest of the league. But the NFL PA is supposed to be there to be that mediator to make sure things are going the right way. And this is an they example of the NFL PA not doing their part. Um, the NFL, like, I don't know. Like, I don't really blame the NFL for having their policy the way that they are, it is like you won that debate if you got them to agree to that. But yeah, yeah. the Which NFLPA shouldn't have had it be this way. And like, Darren, um, he, Jawan James had a tweet today going at the NFLPA saying, like, if you're um, going to encourage us to work out away from the facilities, then you need to be there when things go the other way. Um, like, you need to make sure that there's something there for us because he lost out on $10 million, I think, because of this. So that's a yeah. lot of fucking money. Like, yeah, that's not, and like that's not even like oh like this player's been sitting on bread so we're not like he's been fighting for money and it's losing out on ten million dollars which is life changing money. Yeah, it ain't um, good. yeah, and I just don't like I I get with COVID it's the discussion but again if he was in just in, at LA Fitness lifting weights last year before all this shit started and t- ruptured a pec like are you yeah. is he not getting paid anymore because he's lifting weights not under your supervision. When it could have happened there, if he's just doing regular shit. So no, and, and and it's it's wild because really yeah, it's like he's not there for his own like fun and shit like that. He's there because he's an NFL lineman and he's trying to make sure he's best prepared for his job so his team can do what this team needs to do. And plus, I mean, obviously there's there's a personal part of it in that he wants to make sure he's set up to get the whatever financial stuff he can get uh, when it's time to do that. But ultimately, him being in the right shape helps your team. So. Um, why is the team not going to be him first when he's trying to be you first? So I don't know. Yeah. It's just, it's a bad look for the team. Like, okay, it if is. he comes back next year and he's good, like, are you just like, hey, hey fuck that $10 million last year, dog. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. We, I'm definitely not signing back with you. No, I guess yeah, he, no, he sat absolutely. out last year and like lost out on $5 million too or something like that because of COVID. Christ. So it's like, he's just been like in a rough spot. And honestly, like, someone's going to pick him up. Um, once he heals from this, um, because people do heal from Achilles shit nowadays. Yeah, um, he's good. Yeah. yeah, I I remember it when we um we had that league on Madden last year. He was like my only good lineman I started with. <laughs> it's my boy. Hard as hell to get lineman on that game. God damn. It is. Yeah. Mm-mm. Damn shame. I um, when I was reading the stuff for this, there there was a story from the MLB where. A player hurt his thumb uh, playing video games at home, and his salary is covered for the year. What could you be doing? He said he banged it on a coffee table. So it's like he obviously did something stupid, <laughs> but it's like you he got, hurt himself you doing completely non-baseball yeah. stuff away from the team facility, and he's covered for the year. Yeah, it, I think like because of Michael Jordan, insane. most NBA players have that like love of the game clause in their contract where they could play pickup if they get hurt playing basketball away from the game. They get it covered. So I know that's the thing either. Sense. Love of the game, that's dope. Yeah, it's it's literally the love of the game clause because Michael's like, I'm playing pickup basketball, like, and if I get hurt, I want to still get paid. Well, yeah, uh, and then too, you, you know, guys know get better from that. that heavy. Yeah, like Jawan James, if he sits on his fucking ass all year and is like, yeah, I will work back out. Like him going forward, he should not work out. Period in the off season and work out once the <laughs> training camp opens, and it's like. Oh yeah, you're not very good when you don't do that. He doesn't say that ain't gonna help him either. He ain't gonna get better from that. that. <laughs> yeah, obviously he shouldn't do that. But yeah, that it wouldn't make any sense for him to just sit around and do nothing all year. Nah. If you're like working out, you like that shouldn't like void your salary. Only if you're doing like wild, like 
like uh didn't Ben didn't Ben get him a uh, a motorcycle accident or some shit like that? Remember, Roethlisberger had like a. Uh, oh yeah, I thought you were gonna say like, if you're like doing like James he, Harrison type workouts, you should get your shit voided. <laughs> no, nah, I'm talking like if you like wild and like if you're like doing like extreme shit like uh if you're chasing women like, home from the bar on your motorcycle and you crash. Okay, all right, that's or, one. Illegal things, probably. You get yeah, or like like if you like skydiving or like beat like dirt biking or you fight. snowboarding. Yeah, or if you get in a fight, like shit like that, should like maybe like void your salary. But like yeah, if you're working if you're out, lifting to, weights. Yeah, but if you're lifting weights, like obviously doing shit that like tends to your craft, like your salary shouldn't be voided. That's bullshit. Yeah. So when Jason Kelsey like fucked all his shit up on that rolling chair, or not Jason Kelsey, uh, Jason Peters, he was at a team facility then, or this is like the rule probably changed since then. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, Jason Peters, yeah. for a while, like he wasn't playing. He was man. This is where Antonio. He wasn't he playing. Yeah, because he, he wasn't playing because he he was on the Eagles and he wasn't playing because he kept on getting hurt. He kept missed like have season in, ending injuries. Um, and like I think like he had he had torn his Achilles too. I think and then he reached for it like on a computer mm-hmm. rolling chair or some shit. You yeah. know, who Jason Peters is. I remember when he oh, played he, on the Bills. I remember that's what. I, yeah, I remember that too. With because they yeah. had um, wasn't it Kyle Peters on the D line? Was that? Oh wow! Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm looking at J- Jason Peters. Uh, he had a rolling walker that caused okay. him to re-injure his torn Achilles. He actually sued the company in for one, two million dollars in one. Yep. Yeah, this oh, in wow. 2012. Yeah. He got that break right. below the handlebar three weeks after his surgery. That makes sense, and that makes sense why he would get his. Uh, Look and Talk see like what. Like, that's not his fault. When did he first get into the league? Look that up real quick. It's got to be like, like 2006, 2007. Damn. Yeah, I feel like. I don't think I was. In, I don't think. Because, like, he might have been there walking for on that team. Holy shit. Like, Trey Edwards or like JP Lawsman or some shit, maybe. He got oh. drafted in 2009. He got drafted in 2009? Mm-hmm. Jason Peters? Yeah. The Buffalo Bills traded Peters to the Philadelphia Eagles. And, oh, wait, hold on. No, yeah. When did he get drafted? Like uh, 2004. 2004 is his first season. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Who is he no, blocking for in Buffalo? Holy shit. JP Washington, bro. No, I'm talking about ooh, the running backs. Yeah, Willis McGahee. Oh. Yeah. Travis Henry was out there, too, in 2004. <laughs> Shout out to Travis Henry. Hey, man. You still Legend. got the logistics business in operation. Holler at us. Yo, thinking of even back to the, the injury conversation, I remember when John Wall fucked his Achilles up. And then, like, a month later, he, like, slipped and fell at home, and they wouldn't give any shower. details about it. And, like, this motherfucker got a $30 million contract guaranteed, and there was never any question about, like, oh, well, shit, he, like, he got hurt away from blah, blah, blah. Like, that's crazy. $10 million, and you're like, nah, we're not giving you that. Nah, that man. That is crazy. He was he's big and back being bull. <laughs> <laughs> what you going to do? John Wall would like you for you to forget about that, sir. No, he wouldn't. <laughs> I don't want to bring up. Uh, I don't want to bring up a black man's mistake. Yo, it's a mistake hey, to be blood. On, That's crazy. I know we don't have nah, this no. on the uh, the outline, <laughs> but somebody posted. I think Jamal posted the uh, highlights of uh, Harvin Marison Jr. in our group chat this week. That brother looks nice, and I oh, can't yeah. tell if he looks nice because everybody was afraid of him because he <laughs> looks slow, but big as hell. He's just high school he right now. Yeah. Everything. He's in? Yeah, I think he's yeah. a senior in high school. Okay. He looked nice as hell. And it's crazy to just feel how old I feel. Like, watching an adult Marvin Harrison Jr. Or, like, my team. My, the Chargers have Asante Samuel Jr. on our team. And Man. I was, like, a child watching his father pay. Yeah. I remember when his, his father was, like, still, like, young. Like, before he got to the Eagles. Like, yeah. with all the Patriots and shit. Like, damn. Bro, like, his that big-ass baggy jersey of Asante Samuel. It's like, oh shit! Like we have his child on our team now. Y'all remember yeah, that um, crazy. when when like, I remember Patrick Sertan. I do. Dolphins and the Chiefs. Yeah. Dolphins and the Chiefs. Yeah. Uh, do y'all remember when? Um, like, I think he, I don't know how long he was out for before he came back, but Ty Law came back for like a tiny bit. Um, on the Patriots. Yes. Yes. But they only used him, like, to jam and, like, play, like, five yards, like, deep. <laughs> <laughs> like, he didn't go down the field at all. But he was still nice. Like, I was like, yo. <laughs> That's crazy. Shit, Frank uh, Gore got a son of D1 right now. Who? Frank Gore. Oh, shit. Yeah, he does. Huh? 38 years old, about to play another season, probably. That's crazy. Shout out to Frank Gore. Is he a Hall of Famer? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, just off numbers alone, like just the longevity. Like I don't, he's not gonna get in first ballot, but I think he gets in there. 
because he's going to be third all time. I think he might get disrespected. That's true. Uh, I'm afraid he'll get disrespected because the NF- is Larry Zonka in the Hall of Fame? Uh, I couldn't tell you. If, I couldn't if he's tell in, you. Frank Gore should be in. I feel like Larry Zonka's in the Hall of Fame, and I feel like Frank Gore's better than him. Let me see. Well, so I'm going to look the... real quick. Uh, oh, okay, so the Pro Football Reference Hall of Fame monitor, uh, an average Hall of Fame running back has 106.99. Frank Gore has a rating of 100.05. So average is 106. That doesn't mean everybody that's in is over low. 106. Yeah. Um, it was close. But there's a case there. Like you said, third all time. So, um, yeah. Like, I feel like, like it is. Isaac it, Bruce retired, what, third all time in receiving? He's still not in. Yeah. He retired third all time with some dogs coming right behind him though, because he ain't third no more, is he? This is true. No, no, yeah. he had like Calvin behind him. I think Jerry and Rand. No, he retired before Rand. Antonio Jerry Brown was going to hog his ass till he started fucking up. Yeah, he started wild. Yeah, that man was a, a on a Hall of Fame pace. I just um seen someone today on the NFL subreddit. They basically summed up his six year stretch. It's like better than any other receiver in NFL history. The six years that yeah. he did, like the I think twenty twelve to twenty eighteen. Brown? Yeah, like uh, Bro, better he, than yeah. anybody in NFL history. We talked about that uh, talked about that in the chat and it was like when you really look at the numbers, it's like he did it with touchdowns. Like he was putting up touchdowns every year. Catches, yards. His yards every year was like, oh wow, it's eighteen hundred yeah. yards, fourteen hundred yards, thirteen 13- 15, like every single year. Got you the special you teams. exactly what you're getting from him. Yeah. Especially returning kicks for the first like three or four years. Yeah. Like yeah. he he was easily making it. I, I remember Mixtape made a worth talking about is he better than Jerry Rice already? And it's like numbers wise, he'll never catch him, but like that stretch he's putting up was crazy as fuck, which makes it even funnier to think of like watching Jerry Rice if his numbers were better than Antonio Brown's. Like watching a receiver put up 23 touchdowns in a season with 1,800 yards is nuts. Yeah, but the thing with some of those Jerry Rice numbers is like, cause he had the uh, the what the touchdown record was like twenty touchdowns in a season. Twenty three, twenty. Yeah, so well he had twenty two, right? Cause cause Moss, Moss broke it, he got twenty three, right? I don't think so. I don't think anybody broke it. If I'm not mistaken. No, Moss touchdown Moss record. broke the touchdown record in the season. Moss had it. Me and Moss got yeah. it in two thousand seven, I think. Um, when yeah, uh, when Moss Tom broke it. Yeah, yeah, dude, like. The safety he burned, like, that's my cousin on my mom's side of the family. Uh, James the Butler. Why would yeah. you do that? Like, me? the nigga, like, chasing Randy Boss. That's, yeah, James Butler. That's my cousin on my mom's side. 46 people are going to look at this and make fun of your cousin for the rest of their yeah, life. Nah, he, yeah, he, <laughs> what can you do, man? You can't run with him. Nah. I'm fucking terrified to see that kind but of like, yeah, but The person. thing with uh, Jerry Rice, that, like, he was doing those, he was putting up some of those numbers in, like, what, 12, 14 game seasons? Yeah, oh, they were short games, back then, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. What? I don't think it was. I think he, yeah, he was playing fourteen game seasons on some of those. Well, I wonder when they went. Yeah, the, the twenty three, the twenty, the one where he had twenty one or whatever. It was a it was a lockout year. I think yeah. and he had twenty three touchdowns. The seasons themselves weren't shorter. So uh, let me see. Jerry Rice's best six year stretch was ninety nine catches, fourteen hundred fifty nine yards, thirteen touchdowns, or thir- yeah, thirteen point three touchdowns. This is average over the six years, right? Um, Antonio Brown's best. Average over six years is one twenty one catches, sixteen hundred nine yards, twelve touchdowns. Like so people got him on touchdowns, but they don't have him by a lot. But other than that, like he's he's yeah. the best. Like and, and touchdowns are such a hard thing to like gauge people on because one year you could easily have eighteen, nineteen touchdowns, and the next year you have eight. Just because yeah. that's yeah. true. Like, like that one yeah. year when like people were talking like how Calvin didn't get his many, but then they showed that like he got stopped within the five yard line. Like, and they, seven they times. would never throw it to him in the red zone. Ever. Mm. Like every single red zone possession, they would never throw him the ball. Well they probably they had, got like, them to the red zone. Was, like guarding them. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. The uh, Detroit teams was kinda of bad, so they probably did like mm, we'll just sit three people on him. <laughs> <laughs> What's the worst that could happen? This guy can't catch over here, so <laughs> still give up a touchdown. Yeah. Uh so we had a... Uh, Shakur, do you want to usher us into the next topic about the WNBA? Oh, you don't. Oh yeah, man. They uh, that's their 25th season kicked off today. Oh, how you feel? Shout out, to, shout out to the WNBA man. You got any predictions? Uh, the rest of them. I seen uh, there was two game winners tonight. I know uh, not Sue Bird. The Sabrina chick that don't like Weston. um, don't do it. Sabrina ain't no West. You stop oh, it, my You stop right, Diana, Diana Tarazi hit a game winner. Oh yeah, the okay. goat goat B. Yeah, I was gonna call her uh, the one dude, and then um. 
And then the Sabrina chick, I don't know how to pronounce her last Sabrina name. She had a game with a 3 2. How you say yes, it? Sir, hey. I, I'm saying I didn't ask you. I'm, Sabrina, if you do this and we're wrong, yeah. please yeah. Uh, reach out to that's, us and bring, come on here and correct us, please. She, she was hooping in the, uh, the Kobe's that came out. She was hooping in the Kobe's, came in in the Kobe jersey. Kobe's going into Hall of Fame this weekend. She hit a game winner against Indiana. Big energy. I love it. I All love right. to see that. Shout out to Indiana, that uh, that one chick with the crazy name. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I hope she had a good game. Do you know how to pronounce anybody's name in the WNBA? All right. Uh, so you ask, uh, I'm excited for the WNBA. I'm going to try to pay more attention to it this year. Our girl Stewie is back after Ooh, injury. Went up. Keep going, keep oh, going, boy. keep going. Are you about to get the league pass? The WNBA league pass? No. No. Uh, Why not? I'm just, just going to watch the I'm just going to watch the Storm. Fried rice and some egg rolls. I'm just going to watch Storm <laughs> games uh, primarily because that's the home squad. Brianna Stewart's back from her injury. She won a fucking – she won an MVP in a EuroLeague final. Yeah, she was a Russian Premier League MVP uh, and won a championship overseas while coming back from a torn ACL. Which just like WNBA just players don't get enough gift. credit. Can you shut the fuck up? <laughs> shut up. WNBA players don't get enough fucking credit for how much work they put in. Like, I can't imagine playing a whole ass WNBA season, going overseas. Hooping again, winning a championship over there, winning an MVP over there. Like, could you imagine LeBron hoops fucking uh, 82 games in the league and then immediately like, all right, I'm going to go to the – shut up. Go, I'm going to say nothing. I'm going to go to the Euro League and win another championship. That shit's fucking impressive. I don't care. No, yeah, that's dope, man. They, they yeah. Them ladies be putting in some work. And like like I said Actually, earlier, like we was texting about it. Like, to like if they don't – oh, wow, that's crazy. Hey, uh, big Swedish energy. Okay, you could have bought Blake. five. You could have bought like five tickets with the price of that jersey, probably. But anyways, nah, I got um, it on sale. Oh shit! Don't hate. It. Are you getting league pass, Blake? Uh, I honestly don't think I'll watch it. That's crazy. I told him I'm just gonna. Just watch don't it. go to Five Guys one time, and there's your league pass right there. What? You think I'm at Five Guys? Are they there? Earlier, he said it's the same price as combination fried rice, I believe. <laughs> I think it's actually thirty five dollars. So. No, it's seventeen dollars. Seventeen. Uh, while we're yes, while, while I told you, bro, about gyoza and combination fried rice, bro, you get leaked. Shut up! I don't think I'll watch it though. Like I honestly don't. Like I, I mean, right now, like I watch more baseball than anything, even more than basketball. So, I oh no, I feel you. Turn that on. It's just hilarious. Shout that's seventeen dollars. Don There's Staley, real quick. Twelve teams in like eight games. <laughs> Wait, what? Um, thirty games. Oh, I thought you said eight. I was like, wait, what? Eight games a day, week. Uh, Did, what, who Blake, who's Blake? Who's jersey is that Blake? Uh, I, I fucking hate Blake. Oh, this is the GOAT uh, point guard, Sue Birds. Oh, Sue Bird. Okay. But if you missed it, yeah, I was talking about Brianna Stewart uh, coming back from an ACL injury, went overseas, uh, and had a EuroLeague Final Four and a Russian Premier League MVP. Oh, so wow, she recovered she was, just fine from her injury then? She did. She looks to be able to recover just fine if she won the MVP over there. She actually just got she's engaged back here. so shout out to her. And she's coming back Ooh. on niggas' asses. Uh, Stewie, she's got engaged this week. Shout out to her. Oh, this is... Oh. I think that's enough on that topic. Uh, y'all want to talk about the uh, the NBA playoff picture? No, nah, yeah, for it's sure. spooky hours, bro. For who? You know for who? <laughs> that that man down there in the bottom in the in the animorph shirt. Hey, hold on, Paris. Send me a check, nigga. Sponsor us. Uh, it's not spooky hours, because quite frankly, I'd rather be in the play in, because I don't want to play the pace or the Clippers in the first round. See, I'm scared. You see, Braun right, duck them yeah. Knicks this week. Yeah, y'all still could. You guys have to play the Clippers there. first. Round? Hey, cool. Cool. wait. Let me let me talk about Blake ducking us. I the Knicks started losing. Blake left the group chat for forty eight hours straight. That's or or you know maybe I'm on the East Coast at work the next day and it might have been like midnight by the time mm-hmm. second half started. I, this is the first time I talked to Blake since the Knicks lost. That's crazy. He ain't want to talk to me since. He won't look me in the eye. That's hella crazy, bro. I can't have my phone at work. <laughs> you know, you, you should have gave it to the baby. 
Okay. She be talking shit over there too. <laughs> you said dad, 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 dad. Now I'm like, oh yeah, dad, 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 don't watch that team. Dad, 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 don't watch that team. Um, nah, it's a, it, it's getting a little spooky for the Lakers. But if Portland loses one more game, yeah, Portland loses another game, we're in the six seed. And at this point, I would prefer to be the seven because I think we can win our first game in the play-in, and I think we have a better chance of beating Phoenix in the first round than we do of beating the Clippers in the first round. So. We good I don't, over here. You we have better chance to beat the Clippers and the Phoenix? No, the other way around. I think we can beat oh, the Phoenix. Okay. Than the Clippers. I don't trust least... y'all for seven games and nothing against teams that are healthy. That's fine. I think that's my thing, too, honestly. Yeah, all fine. Y'all can show up for all a Thursday night on TNT like nobody else, but <laughs> seven of them things? All, all good points. But when LeBron James comes back in, you're like, was he ever hurt? You're like, God damn it. Well, is, that, is that the case right now? Is I'm worried about that. I'm worried about that other guy. Who, Anthony Davis? Yeah. You're talking about Anthony Davis that just put 42, uh, 10, and 5 blocks up on Phoenix the other night? Nobody must have touched him. Yeah, against mm. the defensive no, stalwart it, DeAndre Ayton. It, it is hilarious because uh, in the Knicks game, every time he would, like, go to the cup, he Fucking would hit Nerlens, the ground. baby. And it's What's like, up? dog, is he, is he dead? Nerland and Taj. Yeah. Todd. Todd Boyd is strictly out Todd there Boyd? to cause havoc. Todd Gibson. Havoc. Todd Gibson. It doesn't matter. The nigga's not a factor. Uh, strictly out there to wreak havoc. You can put Sue Bird out there. It's the same, same effect. No, Todd, Todd Gibson's In, been a, anyway. a plus defensive player this year, man. All right. Anyway, I feel good about the Lakers. Uh, it's crazy to see a 41 team in the play in, but, you know, it is what it is. I think we win that play in. Let's go. The seventh and eighth is what, 70 and nine? For the play in? 7, 8, 9, 10. So, 7, 8, 9, 10. So okay. recap, 7 and 8 will play. The winner of that game is locked in at 7. 9 and 10 will play. The winner of that, the loser of that game is out entirely. The winner of the 9 and 10 mm-hmm. game plays the 8 seed. The winner of that game is the 8 seed. Just the five-weeker tournament. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, you eligible, but you got to go through some shit. <laughs> yeah, you you, you got you to gotta prove to us you belong here. Yeah, man. Keep your shit in order. And... Right now, it is looking like the Knicks in the first round will play the Bucks. Not in the uh, plan. Not in the plan. Uh, yeah, a couple. Yeah, four games out of play. in the actual playoffs. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Same record. Surprisingly enough, when so I'm you confident them. in the Lakers like for the their playoff run? It's just health, right? Health no, is no. For, like, yeah, it's it's hard to be confident in a team that hasn't been healthy in the last four or five months. Like, I'm like I am confident in LeBron and I'm hoping LeBron looks like LeBron when he comes back. But yeah, it's impossible to be confident in the team to like Dennis Schroeder hasn't played in three weeks. Alex Caruso just left the game early because he's hurt. AD is still playing back into shape. Like LeBron hasn't played two games in a row in six weeks. Like, yeah, no, it's impossible to be confident in the team, but I'm a real nigga. So we don't never show no fear. You know what I'm saying? So how, what if what if we're not talking about fear? What if we're talking about just like actually looking at it like objectively? Like, I still think we can beat Golden State in the play-in, and I think we can beat Phoenix in the first round. Does the the way LeBron talks about his ankle give you confidence? How does he talk about his ankle? He said, "I'll never be one hundred percent again." He, he said that last year too. <laughs> Was he wasn't wrong? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like he said, he he's saying that as in like. <laughs> I've been playing basketball for 18 years. There's not going to be a point in my basketball playing career where I'll feel like I did walk. I ha- he said last year, I haven't felt 100% since I was 19 years old. So, yeah, being a fan of the team and watching every game and every press conference, yeah, I feel fine hearing him say that. You watch every press conference? I do. <laughs> Bullshit. Look at it. I go back and look him up on YouTube. I have a lot of You're not watching Jared Dudley give his thoughts on what they're going to oh, do. Oh, well, I don't mean the... every press conference like yeah, that. Yeah, shut your matter. ass up. Yeah, the people no, yeah, not, not what you're talking about. <laughs> Yeah. You can, you can see every Lakers bitch. press conference just by watching ESPN hey, every day. Put, Blake put that WNBA jersey on and started acting like a straight bitch. Not joking. Wow. <laughs> That's kind of problematic. Hey, so a bar stool you want to sign us. We kind of we kind of fit the brand, bro. Like you see you see the vibes. <laughs> what up, Gillian Wallow? Deion Sanders. No, I feel, I feel good about LeBron. I feel good about AD. I just need them to not get hurt again. Coley, you uh, need some is. black friends again, man. Holla at us. Don't call me a nigger, please. <laughs> we won't join that podcast. But... Yeah, we will not oh, join that podcast. 
I forgot about that. That was the wildest shit I've ever seen in my life. What up? <laughs> What are Wait, how are you feeling about the Knicks, Blake? Wait, Blake, how you feeling about the Knicks? You f- you think the Knicks are getting out of the first round playing the Bucks? Uh, Realistically, uh, taking off your blue and yet, uh, orange goggles. I, I think that series will be tougher than people would think. Yeah, for me, who? Um, for the Bucks, I will I will I will go Bucks four two, but it'd be like a tough like God damn, okay. like, it's a good ass series. Yeah, I um, it's it's hard to say, bro, because like our strength is is our defense, so we can make other teams play way worse than they're supposed to play, but we're not really gonna surprise you with offensive explosion. We've had like maybe like three games this year where it's been like, oh my god, we can't miss. Um, so in the, one You're of them against, playing against another defensive team. No, one was against the Nets. Um, the first Nets. No, game. I'm saying in this first round, like you're oh yeah you're doing the defensive shit against another defensive team. Yeah, and I don't know who I heard say this this earlier this week. Um, it was on another – I think it was on the athletic basketball podcast, the basketball buzz, the Monday one. Uh, they were talking about how Giannis, like, um, he's still doing, like, the thing that rookies do where you just try to out-physical the other team. Like, that's, that's what you yes. go to for, like, your offense, right? You haven't, like, necessarily put together a move or um, – Something that you do to get yourself open and get a shot, right? He's still like trying to just uh, do his steps, get the shoulder into somebody, and then uh, get the layup in or get a foul or whatever. Um, and in the playoffs, where his one team is just planning to play you for the next, um, at a minimum, four nights, um, that you can't do stuff like that. So you need something else. And the Bucks still kind of fall back to that. Um, so to me, they, they are beatable. Um, what they do works very well in the regular season, uh, as you can, like they've been at the top for like the last three years. They've been up there. He's won two mm. um, MVPs back to back. So he's a hell of a player. But it's like he's he's got to add another thing, or the coach needs to figure out another way to to get them going. Um, and, I think both of those things are true. Yeah, maybe you know, maybe you got to do both at the same time. Yeah. And but do you guys have anybody to make him pay for that? Because like. Yes, they typically win in the first round, but last year Bam was what like what, what is what stopped that. Like you know, you y'all gonna, just do that y'all gonna laugh, but I'm telling you, go look at the numbers and watch a game. You you seen the game this week, Nerlens? Oh no, yeah, no, I I completely agree. Yeah, I mean, Nerlens look Nerlens. fucking nice. No, no, we THT uh, is the big fan of doing what Giannis does, but he's not Giannis of like. I'm just going to drive into the paint, and I'm strong, so I'm going to make this go in. Mm-hmm. And Nerland's like, sent two of them into the crowd. Yeah. He, Nerland's, not Nerland's is not for the games this year. I don't know what's going on. Um, I was looking at the stats the other day, and, like, um, for, like, I think defensive box plus minus and um, defensive win shares for bigs, like, he's – I think for all players, like he's, he's, like, top five in the league. Um, yeah. He's always been nice defensively. I think standard. it's nice for him to have a team – like, not be in OKC <laughs> where it's, like – shills around him like you mm-hmm. guys are a good defensive team everywhere and he's good defensively so he can really thrive and like oh shit i'm not having to defend four people running at me yeah we're, we're asking him to do the thing that he's good at not having to do more than that and um exactly. that was supposed to be his thing when he was coming out though like he showed some guys he would that. just get hurt yeah it's, it's like, not just a shot blocking though because he um that's the, the really man he, if like you, the, he was like one of those rim running bigs, like catch oops and all that's that. That's what he shit. started out as. But like with with yeah. the Knicks, like we play very good team defense. Like if you ever um, watch one of our games, just like see what we do like on the weak side of the court and see how like people switch stuff like that. Especially like uh, Julius Randle, R.J. Barrett, and um, Nerlens is a big part of that. Like picking up off of pick and rolls and screens and stuff like that. He guards anybody when they come off of that and stays with them and gets them to pass the ball away and. Um, on the topic of like Randall, it's like it's 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 these things. It's like it's hard to capture because like if you're not getting like the counting stats, like blocks and steals and stuff like that, because your defense is so good, you're making the person pass the ball rather than shoot. Yeah. Um, that's hard to pick up. You have to like actually see them play to, to get that from it. Damn. My fault. Um, I but ping little accident. No, it's all good. But like Nerlens, um, he's been incredible at that this year. And, and like I wasn't joking about Taj Gibson earlier too. Like he's far outplayed what we picked him up for. So. It's 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 possible we can beat the Bucks, but um, it's just it's really hard to say. Like RJ Barrett has been phenomenal at scoring, uh, it's like basically almost this whole entire season. Uh, Derrick Rose has been a tremendous pickup. Alec Burks is playing at a career best. Reggie Bullock's playing at a career best. Play. Like, where um, I'm not gonna lie, I let out an audible laugh when uh, 
two for 12, R.J. Barrett decided that he was taking the game-winning shot against the Lakers. Bitch almost went in. And, and, and threw up a brick. Yep. That bitch almost went in, though. I'm not hearing that. Yeah, sure. That um, shit hit the backboard hard as a motherfucker. That fucking mean. That's cool. They, that's one game, dog. He's shooting forty six percent from three this year. So no, that's true. It's just hilarious that a, a Fuck you. Julius Randle, Julius Randle was in his fucking bag the last like seven and a half minutes, and RJ was like, "Nah, I got this, bro. Watch out." That's what we want, though. We want our young players to be confident, regardless. That's why he got sure. the name the hey. Maple Mamba because he shoots regardless. Didn't he give himself that nickname? No, him? you don't. I feel like you I weren't in Brampton. You weren't in Brampton. <laughs> My bad. You weren't in Mississauga. <laughs> Where the fuck is that? It's, it's all Toronto suburbs. Shout out to Drake; he taught me these. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm I'm happy about the team. I'm calm about the team. We weren't supposed to be here, and we are here. So whatever, man. If 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 uh, freaky Giannis want to beat us, he can beat us. But it ain't gonna be easy. I'm glad yeah. Harden's having a good uh, second year, man. Cause I remember seeing people like, like, oh man, like the Knicks are gonna get RJ. Man, they want a Zion or. But, man, like, any Hell other yeah. year, RJ probably would have been, like, the top two pick. But I was like, man, like, you knew Zion was going one. I think Fuck. he was Hell one. He was, he was one before the college season started. He was the first pick. Yeah. He was one, and I think Cam yeah. Reddish was two. Because people, people were questioning Zion, and then they watched him play, and it was like, oh, okay. Like, man, uh, no, you can't. You can't even make this on the game. <laughs> Zion, Zion's so fucking nice, and his team is firmly out of the playoffs. I think his season's over too. I think whatever he's, yeah, he's he, not playing yeah. anymore. He's out. Oh, he the does. Pelicans are officially eliminated. Yeah, it's a wrap. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. That bro, I can't wait to see him as a Nick. That'll be so much fun. We're not getting. They, him. I think you're getting him. Nah, we we get players that like um got stank on them. That that have have solely some other place and like they they're not really getting the love they're supposed to get, so they got to sign with us. Well, when we were growing up, the Knicks used to always get people like four or five years too damn late. Yeah, that's still the truth. Like there's, if if Nerlens was like this type of product that he is right now, we wouldn't have him. <laughs> He'd be on a good team. Our team was that's good true. going into this year. Yeah, mm-hmm. Maryland's turned down or played on his qualifying oh, offer. Just and, like, bring that almost up. ruined his career. Mm-hmm. Turned down like that's seventeen that's million a year or something like that. Yeah, and people were like, "Yeah, he's a dickhead." I'm like, yeah, I think he just thought he was good at basketball and deserved more money. I don't know. Better on himself. It's an admiral thing to do. Like, yeah, you should try it. Didn't it. really work out. Money back though, because that was a what, what four year deal. When, when he turned down? Yeah, it was. Years. It was four far above what he probably. Of the very, was the very I know he, he he definitely wish he probably would have took it. I say that. Yeah, he'd be he'd yeah, playing white pals in the right this, now. Yeah, at this point he would have been back on. He would have been on the Knicks again. Like he could have still gotten out of there and yeah. went where he wanted to go. Young enough. Dude, you guys see all the depot might miss next year. I know. Yeah, he's having surgery on his quad. Yeah, to, they're likely yeah, missing next year. You turned down a deal from Houston, remember? Yep. Yeah, oh my man. God. Yeah. It's getting nasty from uh, from Vic, and they're man. they're losing the the this last season of the the vice uniforms too out there. Are they oh, really? Boy. Yeah, yeah. They they ruined them. They need to retire. Them. Just hang it up. Yeah, people the said these look like like tricks yogurt this year. And I was like, damn it. <laughs> they does, look like uh, yeah, absolutely oh, look like yogurt. That's the first the first two years were great. This year, just hang it up. They sold. They said they sold more. Uh, like it was like three times more jerseys um, over this vice run oh, than yeah. they did in the big three era. Damn. Yeah, because the jerseys are so cool. Like I've seen people That's up still here crazy, wearing though. like Dwayne Wade vice jerseys crazy. that he played in five times. Yeah, Tyler he had like the most like he was maybe not the most popular player on the planet at the time because Kobe was still playing. But if not like a top three, like LeBron. Yeah, but it wasn't nobody was buying Chris Bosh jerseys. And outside of Miami, I don't think I really see people buying Dwayne Wade jerseys. So it makes sense. Mm. Yeah, I, I you rarely see a Dwayne Wade jersey. My stepbrother had one, and he had the Converse too. Back when Dwayne Wade had the little Converse. <laughs> Yuck! Hey, those the way Wade Converse were kind of cool. I no, know. they weren't. They were I ass. Like Whatever, no, I like he them. he wore both of them and would beat me in basketball all the time together. Mm. Bad I know you were beers, sick. Huh? That was fucking terrible. <laughs> Smoking on Blake Pack tonight. Yeah, man. I had, I had nothing for nobody until I got like bigger and more athletic than people. I could just <laughs> run and throw the ball at the hoop. <laughs> <laughs> I had a good like year and a half window where I was like. A good pickup in in pickup basketball, like you. No, we've had fun playing pickup basketball. That yeah, shit was dope. Where it's like you you got a plus if you picked me up because I can play defense, rebound, run, 
Like, dude, <laughs> play it. Play it. That's like your strongest. Hell. Yeah. Oh, shit, man. Cause Patrick, like, like he played basketball, but like he knew that like we weren't basketball oh, players, so he would be like. Yeah, he won't be like tripping with, and stuff. I don't want to play with a six nine nigga when I'm in high school. Sorry. No, see, this is how I knew we weren't we weren't smart like that. Because if we would have um, been smart when we played, um, what what street is that park on? Um, Sixty fourth. Sixty fourth. When we we were with, oh. I think we had him and his brother at sixty fourth. We would have been trying to play people for money if we would have known better. Oh no, yeah, we would have gotten shot. We probably would have gotten shot. But <laughs> <laughs> several people have been killed at that park. We could have made like forty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, you play one more game and we are murdering you, nigga. Nah, yeah, he was super cool because it was like, man, like he wouldn't, like he would know when to like take over. Like, all right, bro, we down, man. We trying to win this game. He'd be the point guard. It'd be yeah. cool as hell, man. <laughs> I'm sure he loved that too because he didn't have to do like big man shit. He just got to, yeah, for sure, have fun. That does got to be the cool part about like being just. A... I was thinking about that earlier this week when uh, the Thunder played, or no, we played the Rockets. The Lakers played the Rockets. And there was four people on that court I have never heard of, never seen. And I know them dudes will walk into any YMCA or any park in this country and give anybody 50. Oh, like, it's got to be cool as hell to be like, yeah, I'm in the NBA. Like, Kevin Porter's a name, obviously. But imagine he just walks into a random gym. He's giving you 100 points. Well, he was like a little <laughs> man. He was po- I thought he was going to be like a higher pick, but he clearly has, like, ability. Like, he dropped 50 yeah. in the NBA game. For sure. Yeah. On Drew Holiday. But, like, Guys like that, where it's like, yeah, the 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 Rockets had some random dude put up like sixteen and nine and nine on us. Like yeah. that dude's walking in any gym in the country and putting up a hundred points on on nigga sales. Oh, yeah. some, of them, some of them random like fourteenth man on the bench dudes, they go to a gym or any anything like that. They go to a court and look like Jesus. Yeah, that video of Brian Scalabrini just busting somebody's ass at the gym earlier this year. Yeah, fuck Brian. Why? Nothing. I don't, I don't fuck with that dude, man. Why? He did the uh so you know when he was working with Golden State, I guess he was the one that was like secretly recording like uh Mark Jackson like conversations when they were trying to get him out of there. Oh yeah. Did not know that. Yeah, that's, yeah, he's corny as fuck. <laughs> fuck that dude. Oh, fuck that shit. My, my, Mark Jackson was kinda of being corny. Giving mm-hmm. me the butt. But anyway, let's my, move on. It was fucking tripping. What was he doing? <laughs> he was like hey, pitting plays against each other. He like told like FK Udo like the players didn't want him on the team and shit like that. And then he told FK it Udo was FK Udo though, hear me out. They all like you. You you got to figure Andrew Bogut was like a key part of their championship runs, right? Epka is probably about the same talent level. So either way, he told a player that the team <laughs> didn't want him there, and then he told the I team that Epka Udo didn't want to be there. Like he tried to pit them against each other and stuff like that. Um, and it's just like yeah, creating like false narratives for no reason at yeah, all. He, he was trying to force them niggas to go to church and like, yeah, if you don't play, if you're not praying every day, we're not going to win games. Just some weirdo shit. He was being a weirdo. Yeah, uh, I heard people always think Jesus when they win championships, man. You were trying to get you on an early start. And Jesus didn't do nothing to help you niggas get there. But all right, nah, I never seen Jesus beat a double team. Never. I'm oh. just kidding. I no, did, but he... Jesus let two, five, six niggas put him up on a cross and bang them chits in his hand. He respectfully, no power. Nah, he did it for the people. Though he did it for the team. <laughs> he said, "Humanity, uh, I got you, bro." Humanity. Like they they could have solved that in an easier way. Next. Let's see. What's the next topic? Um Well Mass Effect? You want you want to talk about the uh the draft? Oh shit, I'm sure about my no. bad. The, the draft <laughs> shit. Well, Are we doing drafts though? <laughs> I don't know nothing about the prospect coming out, really. I just know, like, the two I, G League guys. And, I uh, don't necessarily want to talk about that, but a podcast I was listening to this week, they are talking about um, extensions coming up for, like, rookie players more so than anything, um, people that are eligible. So this this season, um, we got, like, DeAndre Ayton, Marvin Bagley, Luka Doncic, Jared Jackson, Ooh. Trey Young, Mo, uh, Mo Bamba, Wendell Carter, Colin Sexton, um, Shea that Gildress. An interesting rookie class. Yeah, Michael Porter, um, Ooh, Lonnie Walker, one. and Freeney Simmons. Yeah, so it is. It, oh, Robert Williams, he's probably just really going to get whatever is coming next for him. Grayson Allen's in here too. Um, but it, I don't get know. Another extension already? Already? Yeah. This. So this isn't like a whole another contract. I think this is probably the what the the or one where you get two ex two another two another two years whatever. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, but for the top guys, I think they could probably sign you to that like five or whatever. Yeah, and I think who do you think comes out of, of out of this and gets that? But probably like well, 
Luca, if anything. Luca for sure. Trey Young. Who else did? Luca Trey, Trey Young. Young. Um, they were talking about Mario Colin Batty Sexton. Won. DeAndre Ayton might. Yeah, yeah, because Col- well, Cleveland can't lose him, but he's clearly like their best scorer. Oh, yeah. Colin so, Sexton probably, but they also got to pay Jared Allen this year too. Yeah, but so they this is both. actually the, the podcast listened to the, Colin Should Sexton was both. the topic because he's kind of in a weird spot where. <gasps> the team has been doing this thing since he's been there of giving him like the super green light and having all the staff and like everybody there, like just speak positively to him and about him, regardless of like, if he does bad or good and stuff like that to try to make him be a good player. Right. Yeah. Um, so his numbers are probably a little bit inflated, but the numbers that he does have puts him in like super rare company through like his yeah. first like three years. Or yeah, whatever. Hoop, bro. Like, there was a story that came out this week or last week about opposing players. <laughs> we'll talk shit to players like, you know he's not about to pass the ball, right? Yeah, like, no, that Colin Sexton, yeah. yeah, yeah. We listen to the same one, yeah. Like he's not giving you the ball. But, Do you so remember th- when they were talking about like the the only players that average like the same stuff that he had like through the first three years? And, like it was like him, Kobe, LeBron, and like <laughs> two yeah, other Hall like, of Famers. Those guys. It was those guys. Yeah. Yeah. Like the I don't remember the players, but it was like Allen Iverson was I think might have been in there. Like the the point guards and shooting guards or whatever. Where it's like, oh, okay, yeah, you're gonna be the, one of the next great players ever. But, but like, they were also saying they can just not pay him this year and give him that same deal next year because mm-hmm. uh, they need to pay Jared Allen because they gave up two first to get him or a first to get him. Yeah, and he's been hooping. Like you might as well bring him back. But it's like that's that's like the hard thing. Like with this is that you have him who you've like you've you've inflated his numbers a bit. He obviously has talent. He's good, but um, you've given him every opportunity you could possibly give him, and you have another player next to him, Darius Garland. Who may be able to do like some of the same things that um, a lot of the same. You've things. deflated yeah. his numbers because you have him, Colin Sexton, on the floor with him, and you still have uh, Kevin Love under contract for however long. Um, he obviously uh, has talent. He just gave the fucking uh, Celtics a bunch of buckets. Yeah, he, he, the forty ball. I think. <laughs> oh my like, god, forty ball. Right An efficient ass. For, he was like six for eight uh, from three. He was drinking wine at halftime. Seventeen from. Yeah, he's stupid. Yeah, I don't know what you do at Colin Sexton because it's like he's obviously good and you should keep him. Should you give him a max? Probably not. Because, like, are you building around him and but, Jared Allen? Like, you're building around him and Jared Allen? Yeah, it's – it's it's what I think about it, too, is like it's, it's this, that scaled max, right? Because his max is not Russell Westbrook's max because he hasn't played as many years. So yeah, maybe yeah. he is worth his max right now. Um, yeah. But the, I think unique. the rookie max is like 5 130 like that's still big money, and then you're giving Jared Allen though? probably twenty. Yeah, because I know that's what that's what Carl Anthony Town signed. Is it his first? No, I'm saying like by five, percentages like of what the though. cap is. Is that like a lot? Is that is that oh, too much to give him? Yeah. You gotta have something out there, bro. Like, but but if if the following year Darius Garland needs to be paid, and Jared Allen's getting paid this year, like you're gonna have three dudes who are. Darius Garland's obviously not going to get a max, but you're going to have no. two max or near max guys, and then who aren't good enough to lead your team or like be the stalwarts of your team. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. Marvin that, Bagley. That team is interesting. Is he probably? Well, I can't imagine. I can't imagine that. he gets extended. No, like they probably will because he's not getting a max. But I don't think he's. No. He, he'll get an extension, no. but not no max. God, what, a, what a fuck up! Everybody, I think somebody will max him. Everybody who didn't He's talented, him, man. Like, he can play. Him. He just be banged up. Yeah. Like, he, Always. Just, he can rap, man, too. Like, he kind of got yeah. named. Okay. And he, he, can, he can rap. He, there's some ability there, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think everybody who didn't pick Luka in that draft is probably kicking themselves every day. Got to be. Lottie Lottie got fired immediately after. Yeah. Lottie I want to see how many games. How about Jaron Jackson? He's been hurt a lot. He's been hurt, but when he's good, him and Jod like get along really, really well. They're not. So, like, I don't think he'll get maxed. Yeah, I don't uh, think he'll get maxed either. In Memphis, small working, market honest. Memphis. Yeah, that's true. So, this season, uh, Marvin Babley has started twenty forty two of forty three games, but <laughs> he started fifty two total games in his career. Forty two wow. of those coming this year, and he's played. 118 total games. He played 13 last year, 16, 62 his rookie year. He's played 43 games this year, so pretty much every game this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, because they, they're at like 70, so he missed 30 games this year too. Jared yeah. Jackson's uh, played 13 games this year. Or no, yeah. 10 games. And he, 
he he got hurt last year, like right before that playing game that they had, I think, and then missed most of this year with that same injury. Yeah, he played fifty eight games his rookie year, fifty seven his sophomore year. Yeah, and, and then years. missed this year. I think with how good he is, I think he'll get re signed. Out of he's not getting a max, I don't think. Is but it, uh... I like in, in the same situation of arguing. Do you pay Jared Allen and Colin Sexton max deals or big money? I would feel much better giving John ja Morant and Jaron Jackson Jr. the same money that we're saying I wouldn't give to Colin Sexton and Jared Allen. So, and they're all mm. similar players other than Jaron Jackson stretches the floor. So, like, for the max for a six-year or less player um, starting next season is $29 million. Um, it goes up eight percent each Jeez, year after that. Stars. I don't. I, I don't know. I feel like. I feel like that that could probably happen for a lot of these guys just because, like, yeah, like I don't. They're they're not going to sign a player who is better than the guy that they're debating over. And if they do sign a guy that's better than the guy they're debating over, it's going to be more than that. For a lot of these guys, I don't know. Marvin Bagley not getting that. He shouldn't get that. Colin Sexton probably should. Jaron Jackson probably should. Luca definitely should. Trey definitely should. Who else was in that list of players we talked about? Um, pull that back. Grayson Allen, obviously not. No, Fuck no, no. no. Uh, uh, Trey Young. You say Trey Young already? Yeah, he's yeah, just absolutely. Uh, Wendell yeah. Carter Jr. He's in Orlando now. No. They don't have anybody. They have nobody. I don't think they're giving a twenty nine million because they, they got Mo Bamba yeah. and Jonathan Isaac who will need to get paid in the next. Mo Bamba's on this on this same run. Oh, okay. Yeah, you did say Mo, and he's they he's not he, getting paid. He sucks. Yeah, I thought he was gonna so be there. Wendell Carter's been traded. I don't, I don't know if he sucks, but I don't know if he's getting. He got he's traded for an All Star. Yeah, he's not getting a max. Uh, they, uh, Mikael Bridges, they, what's his name? He's gonna, they're gonna pay him. Yeah, so Phoenix one. Yeah. They're not giving him a max, but he's nice. Miles Bridges, him. he's gonna have some suitors. Yeah, he's the best rapper in the league right now. He got to extend him. He's up there. Uh, he's not getting the max, but Top he'll three. get paid. Um, SGA? Shortly. Yes, he's getting max. Oh, for sure. Uh, max. Michael Porter Jr.? Max. Ah, wait. Somebody, Somebody will give him that motherfucker a max. They're going to give him as much money as they feasibly can give him. Yeah, I think he'll, if they probably won't jump to the max, if they got extension years they can give him, they're going to do that on him for sure. Is Michael, would you, so Michael Porter Jr., out of that class of people, Michael Porter Jr., Luca, and Trey are the three best easily. Would you guys take Michael Porter over Trey? I wouldn't. Mm, no. Trey, um, well, I don't know, man. I no, like not not I'm based on what not, no, in his situation, seen. I would take him. But yeah, I don't know if, if he was in trade situation. If he'd be this nice, that brother is nice. Yeah, the he's Hawks efficient team. as hell. He shoots like Trey's a lot better than I expected. Like I thought he'd be good, but he's he's better than I. Uh, Trey got to play Porter hero ball like every night. Forty four percent from three and like fifty eight percent from two. He is efficient as hell and giving you whatever amount of points you need every night. No vax is on him too. He got here. Ooh. Clean blood. Yeah, that, uh, he oh, had no, COVID. No, it, it, no. Blood dirty. He had COVID. <laughs> Shout out my oh, Michael, brother. Michael Porter Jr. is an anti vax too. That's what I'm talking about. No, I'm talking about Michael Porter Jr., not, not Trey Young. Oh, okay, that's a Trey Young. Oh, they don't yeah, all these nah, mixed nah. things. Hell no. Nah. Do you see Trey Young's hair, man? You got hella flu shots. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he's about to take a trip up I 95 and beat the brakes off you. I'd, I'd be happy for it. I'll take Trey Young punches. <laughs> Pause. I think uh, yeah, nah Blake beating the fuck out of Trey Young. I'm I'm capping. I don't think so though. I I think so. Trey Young is <laughs> an inch taller than you, maybe, and forty pounds lighter. Nah, like I'm I'm socially six feet tall. Uh Trey Young's like standing like at a laser scale okay. shit, like six I, two. I've seen you bench a smart car before, dog. Fuck out of here. You don't think Trey Young can do that? <laughs> no, nigga, what? He's no. a professional athlete. KD couldn't bench 135. What are you talking about? When he was like 19 coming off of eating Lunchables for Trae 12 is years. 20. Trae Young is 20 years <laughs> he's old. Not. And is 100, he's 128 pounds. What are you talking about? Get the fuck out of here. You, Trey Young and Brindley do the same amount of shit. Fuck out of here. Oh, <laughs> yeah. What are you, hairstyle the same. Workout regimen the same. 
Listen, I don't mean to cap go to on, She doesn't man. deserve that. She doesn't deserve oh, she's that. She's working on it, man. We eight months in, man. <laughs> them follicles is folliculing. They coming. Uh, yeah, that being said, a lot of these, uh, somebody's going to get maxed who doesn't deserve it. It's probably going to be Marvin Bagley. They're going to give Marvin Bagley $30 million. All right, last one. Lonnie Walker. Can watch. Spurs. <laughs> No, he's going to get like $8 million and be way better than he They have nobody left. Like, who are they paying? Why won't they pay him? Uh, Devin White. They got Dante Moore, right? They got That's Dante, it. DeMar DeRozan, mm-hmm. uh, Derek and... White. Oh, That's shit. Yeah, that Derek White's like... on the that contract already. They're going to give him $29 million. They could give it to him for less than five? Like, less than five years? They might give him like two years, 29 I can, Three years. I can see Lonnie. Two I can see team. Lonnie getting a, a swift eleven million a year. Three okay. years, ele- Three years, thirty-three million. He'll figure it out. I think when he starts playing well, it's like, damn, this guy's way better than this contract. It's the Spurs. They don't like to pay anybody. He's playing. Uh, he played fifty-eight games this year, twenty-five minutes a game, eleven points a game. So probably not twenty-nine. But yeah, you're not. Yeah, yeah, you're giving him a three thirty-three. Yeah. But now you can play him at the four because you got rid of Marcus Aldridge. So, all right. Well, that's enough of talking about niggas who are going to make way more money than uh, we ever will. For Cap, doing Josh going to the moon. Let's go. Facts, 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 facts. <laughs> I, God, I'm still kicking myself that I didn't put more money in. Anyway, uh, have, have either of you guys played Mass Effect since it came out? What's Mass Effect? Like you just want like. Like since like originally dropped or what? No, Jamal. Why would I ask you that question? What yeah, so okay. can you what it came what out all, yesterday? Or what games oh, are on this on this collection? Is it is it just one and two, one, two, and three? It's one, one two, two, and three plus all the DLC. Okay. Yeah. So we're touched. Um I'm gonna give my, my Mass Effect uh history. Listen. Jamal, um, I'm so mad that Jamal was like, Yeah, do you mean do I did I play the one that came out in two thousand seven? No, nigga, I'm asking you. Play no, he, was, came out he was producing shit. He was podding right there. That's all it was. Trying to get you talking. I'm just asking, so, man. Yeah. Um, but I'm at, Did you guys play the legendary edition? I haven't even touched every it. edition I play is legendary. Yeah. Okay. But run the streets <laughs> from 19 to TCC. Okay. Is, did you go check over there? I'm still running them. Your, your name is still there. Yeah. So, um, Mass Effect One. Was not feeling it too much. This is not the legendary edition of my review, nothing like that. Uh, Mass Effect One, I've, I've tried to play it a few times. Um, this is just not my vibe. I try to play it on a computer where I could like make things yep. a little bit better with some mods and shit like that. It's just, it's, I don't know, the format of that is just wonky, dog. Uh, it's not good. Two, one of the best games I ever played in my life. Three was fun for one run through. Um, have not gone back to it since I did that one run through. I made sure I got to see all the endings though, because I figured out you could stop right before you make the choice and just go and hit all the three things and see them all. Um, mm. But that game was was fun. They uh, worked on a lot of systems like the combat and whatnot. It made them a bit more fun. It was more Gears of Warzy, I think, compared to two. Yep, um, it was for sure. But I'm I'm very optimistic and excited about how one looks on this legendary edition, and I'm excited to hear Tyrell talk about them because um, <laughs> it seems like they did a lot of things to correct some issues that were there in one. So yeah, how do you feel so about that? So one, so I started last night. I put three and a half hours in, I think, and one looks better. Like you, it's got a maybe not sixty frames a second, fifty six something like that. Like, trying it for sure looks better. And I'm replaying it because, so with one, had it on Xbox, played it once, traded the game in to get two, and never played it again. So I want to go back through for the story of it. The combat is awful. Like, it's still bad. The movement is, like, if you didn't fuck with one because of combat, movement, and stuff like that, it's not any better. I liked one Uh, back in the day. That was my shit. And I liked one in 2007, too, because in 2007, that was kind of what we were used to. Playing it now, having played two I've, I've ran through two 15 times, maybe, like, front to back. So, That's like, you've gotten a better combat system. So I'm going to I'm gonna finish this one. It looks way better. I can't wait to get into the story and, like, meet all the characters again. But the combat of it is rough. Really? Like, they clearly did not really know what they were doing then, and they didn't have anything to change it. Um, yeah. So that's my review so far on one is it's the same. It just looks better. And two and three, like two is like you said, my favorite game of all time. Like the perfection. 
Uh, so I'm looking forward to getting into two, looking better. The combat's great, all that. And then three, very Gears of war the ending. <laughs> I was telling one of my coworkers this week, uh, the ending of three was like the Donald Glover meme where he walks in with the pizza and everything was on fire. Because that was pre-Twitter like Twitter and Reddit really popping off. So I played three and loved it. And I got online, I was like, oh, everybody hates this shit. Yep. So I'm, I'm interested to play three now with the, the, the mind frame of like, Everybody hated this shit, but I really fucked with it. I really the the last two games of that series are goaded for me. Love them. One is rough. So one is a game for people who play it on easy. If you like story, just get through the game because the story in that game is awesome. Yep. I think I was on Reddit when uh, three came out because I do remember the online backlash with all of that and. I like had I have not had access to those, I wouldn't have known that that the ending was an issue. And then looking at it now in context, I completely get why it is an issue. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's really like, insane mean, that, like, all this... I, I pick a color. Yeah, it, you're talking about hundreds of hours of gameplay here whittled down to um, you basically walking to three different options um, that are, like, color-coded to kind of match the, um, what is that, the morality will of Mass Effect. Yep. And... That's that's it. Like every no, everything and, you did comes down to those three, and and you say three, but initially it was two. They added the third one later. Oh yeah, like, they did the one in the middle. Later. Yeah, yeah yep. it was red or blue. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. that. It it's really insane because there, there's so many like because I think you're saved from Mass Effect One if you did it right. You could basically have all your options and stuff roll all the way yep. to the end of three, and it's it's there's a lot of different things that are changing the entire world of that game that you make choices about yeah. that um doesn't matter anymore because you you picked whatever it, yeah playing it playing three at in real time felt good and it was like okay like that was fun because the game the game itself literally up until the last 35 minutes it's awesome like the combat's better the story is good it makes perfect sense for an ending but it's the ending sequence and the ending like cutscenes doesn't make any sense at all um, but uh, like you said, like I put 200, 300 hours into the first two games, most of that being into the second game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so like having that relationship with those characters, building all that up to the ending of it, it was like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to see this ending. But yeah, when it's like, I made intricate decisions that carried over from 2007 into 2014 and you gave me red or blue. Yeah, you're talking about like <laughs> choices that are like ending entire alien races and shit are choosing yes. ones to be at war at like forever. Like it's it's yep. big things. Like just to wrap them up like that is kind of a slap in the face to everybody. Yeah. It was it's quite a it was lazy. Very it was I Game of Thrones lot, season eight before Game of Thrones season eight. Oh fuck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I forgot that show existed. Uh it, it yeah. It it was very Game of Thronesy. Wow, that's a perfect Matt, and that just kind of I think that goes to really show how hard it is to wrap up something that people deem as perfect. Just don't like, do it. We don't we're we're never really happy with endings of things like Avengers kind of wrapped up and people were mostly happy with it, but even that was rough. But like it's really hard to wrap up some shit that people have been invested in for years cuz we have theories, we have hopes, we have dreams. We like it would make sense for it to end like this. And all of those options probably would have been better. Like the theories that people had for Game of Thrones season eight oh, were man. so much better than what they actually did. No, the, yeah. the theories I had. Go ahead. Oh, bringing bringing something to an end where you actually have to close the door on storylines is, I is like you said, like it's like next to impossible. Like you talk, you brought up Avengers, but it's like Avengers keeps going. There's just some yeah. things that ended, like yeah. an arc ended, but the story keeps going. Exactly. Bringing finality to things like that is like you. There's no way to do it, really. Yeah. We, I shit, we, we all watched uh, Sons of Anarchy and we're like, that's how they ended the show. Like, the show, the the last season wrapped up and then, like, episode eight or nine, whatever was the last episode, was like, oh, wow, you wrapped up everything in this last 14 minutes of the show. Mm-hmm. That didn't make mm-hmm. any sense. So it that's just shows so how much. hard it is to wrap things up, which maybe don't, like, that Mass Effect universe is so big and so intricate and so good. Like, you can look at, uh, like the later Fallout games take a lot from that. 
Outer Worlds takes a lot from that. Like, so many RPG games that came after Mass Effect take so much shit from it. Why did you even need to wrap it up? <laughs> like, yeah. just because trilogies were the thing? Like, keep making them. And now they're making another one. So it makes more sense. That's in that universe. They try to go to Are a they? different Ooh. universe. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were. When they were rolling out Legendary, they, showed a little they like, showed Liara, Liara picking up Shepard's helmet. So it's like, okay, they're going to do something else in that universe. Um, but you should have you should have just never wrapped it up in the beginning. They bring it back with random? Reapers. <laughs> you know they cut out all of her butt scenes in the new uh, in the legendary edition. I did not know that, so I'm gonna wait for sale. Her, her her character arc was uh, she didn't like that they made her perfect in every way, including that ass. Uh, so they were like, well, we probably shouldn't zoom in on her butt anymore. But you could you could just type in Rule Thirty Four yeah, on the internet. Definitely. And all you need. Strong seven out of ten now. Let's game out of here. <laughs> ten out of ten. Play Mass Effect. If you're gonna play the first one, play the shit on easy. Don't worry about like enemies don't matter, bosses don't really matter. It's a story. You just get the story out of it. Kill the Krogan. Kill wow. the Krogan, because they are the best. Mm-hmm. All right. Um PS five hopefuls out there. Um your day's probably not really? coming anytime soon, man. Get your luck together, man. Get your, uh, so I learned this today from some people online. Um, if you're looking for a PS5, so the, the shortage is going to continue next year. I'll, I'll, the semi, semi, semiconductor shortage, um, it's not going to stop anytime soon. There's a lot of variables that go into it. Not So there's um, there was an increased demand for electronic devices last year because everyone's working from home. Um, there's an increased demand for them from the auto industry because cars are getting more advanced. Um because of that, they need more manufacturing for them, so they need to make more machines that make them. There's increased demand there because those machines need semiconductors. Um, everything is is pointing yeah, towards things not getting better until the supply chain gets a lot better, and that that's not going to be a fast thing because they're making consumer devices at the same time they're making manufacturing devices. Um, so if you're looking for a PS5, you probably want to join like a Discord group, bro. Like. Join a Discord group. Um, get a bot. <laughs> get in a group. I would. Get somebody yeah. who got a plug. Something. I've, I learned today about Discord groups for uh, these drops because uh, there was on a PC. The, the build a PC sell some Reddit because they're, t- the, they're the same shortages that are affecting uh, graphic cards and I believe processors too. Um, but yeah, join a group because the people in there they're go- they're going to have bots running inside of the group that are giving you stock updates at the same time that they happen. And then you also have just people talking and like giving you direct info on when shit is going to happen. So if you're really motivated to find a DS five and do not have one, um, I would say join your discord group and go from there. Um, All that being said, Blake has made the point. If you don't have a PS five, you aren't missing out on much. Like there aren't a ton of games that you can't play on your PS four. Everything does look better. The controller is super dope. Like, all that's tight. You're not missing out on much, Mm-mm. so don't don't break the bank to get one. Nope. Don't spend nine hundred and twenty dollars on one on eBay because it sounds cool. Don't pay more like, than retail. Oh, bro. Yeah. Don't buy yeah. one of them wild ass packages. GameStop's trying to show. Like buy the the one that you want, whether it be digital or a uh, disc. Yeah, like eight hundred dollars for two games that you didn't want. Um, nope. Yeah, nope. don't it's do not that. Be worth um, it. Because right now, um, this this thing right, you can see in the back. My, <laughs> It's it's not all sorted out yet. Um, until they get the storage situations figured out on here, it, it's not worth your time because like the games aren't there and it's it's just kind of frustrating at the moment. Um, as every, <laughs> the storage situation is nuts. Yeah, I'm sure most yeah, people they I probably would... looks like mine where you got this thing hanging out in the front of it, your ex- ex- removable hard drive. Um, yeah. But the actual PS5 games can't even go on here. It's just your PS4 games. Oh, the PS5 games go on here in storage now. You can't play them off of here. Yes. Let me say that. Yeah. So um, the storage situation, it sucks because games are so freaking big now. You only have 500 gigs of internal storage. There's an extra NVMe slot in here that you can't actually use yet until they turn that on. And when they turn that on, it's only going to be for select drive, which is insane. Like there are so many different like just hard drives out here that like you're only going to give me yeah. a list of these ones I can use. So it's like, what are we doing? Don't I was I was very heavy on the like you only need. 500 gigs because i made it through the whole ps4 generation with no extended hard drive no extra hard drive on the inside like i moved the games around the way i needed them and i didn't really ever need it 
And then I was downloading Mass Effect this week. I deleted Call of Duty. That shit was 198 gigabytes. God like, damn. That's, Call of Duty and 2K took up, I think, 60% of the storage on my console. Good Lord. And I, yeah, right, for sure. Yeah, 2K is 115 gigs, I think. Yeah. 2K is like, it, it, Mass Effect is three games, and that is 80 gigabytes. Obviously, they're older games, but it's like, yeah, something... If if you play COD every year, and you have it on your console all the time, you play Warzone, you play COD, all that, two hundred gigabytes a year taken away. That's a quarter mm-hmm. of your console right there. Yeah, they got the storage shit figured out. It's it's it, it's just part of the game though. Now, like dog, it's they're not it's COD's not though. yeah COD's not fucking up, but the fact that like we you have a PS5, you can play games in 4K. 4K textures are a lot bigger than 1080p textures or 720p textures, mm-hmm. which is, like, what was being used on the PS4. Um, yeah. 10- and COD is a lot. Like, if you're getting Warzone, Zombies, Campaign, regular multiplayer, like, people are putting thousands of hours in a COD every year. 4K like, is eight times the pixels of 1080p. That's, That's crazy. A lot. So, yeah, games are going to get bigger. Then you have, like, the sound files, which... You got your fancy headphones. You want to hear shit good. That's got to be in a higher bit rate. That's big. Um, yeah. You got cutscenes, which you can't choose not to download. Those are videos which are also in 4K. If you mm-hmm. don't want the jarring difference when the shit loads, that's big. Mm-hmm. Um, with Modern Warfare, if you download the whole entire game, um, that means you downloaded the campaign, multiplayer, and Warzone. Um, you also have Spec Ops with that. And with Spec Ops, you have the original Warzone map for Spec Ops in there. So that's another Warzone map you have to have installed in your thing. You have all the maps that came with the DLC and throughout the, the, the year that Modern Warfare was out. And then you have the Warzone map as it continually updates in there. Yeah. You have to have all the assets from every single barracks bundle thing that was in there, too. Jesus fucking It's crap. a lot of stuff. Like games yeah. Are- and it's, yeah, and God forbid you want to play more than one Call of Duty at once. Oh no 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 no! <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got a Call of Duty five, right? And then that's what you got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you put two Call of Duties on there, you can get one other game. Yeah. <laughs> so it, games are games are getting bigger as our technology gets better. Um, there's not really a way around unless you got like you all know you got Silicon Valley. You got Richard Hendricks with the Pied Piper uh, algorithm right. to get the compression popping. It never worked. It did work. It did, but then it didn't. What did you watch? Pie Piper. You watched all Not of it? Work. Yeah, I watched the whole thing. No, you didn't. He just kept getting robbed. I just watched it. What are you talking about? I put you on the show. Eat no, a you dick. did not put... Yo, you are lying. I'm not. You got me... We all look alike now? That's, that's what this is? Kind of. Anyway. Uh, y'all remember the days where you could just pop your hard drive off the top of your 360? Y'all know you're lying because you never even touched the Xbox. I forgot about that. I know she. I had a I had a three sixty. That's how I played Mass Effect One. No, we didn't. All right. I forgot. Mass Effect One wasn't on PS3, so how'd I play it? You didn't. You just capping about that too. Facts, facts. Oh yeah, it was on PS3, huh? I forgot about that. Later, Xbox exclusive had the button right here. Yep. Pow. I remember that. You could buy the arcade edition that didn't have an extended edition or whatever, wasn't it? Yeah. Damn, I forgot about that. Yeah. Broke boy. What, you, what y'all think of the new uh, uh, PS5 controller colors? That red is oh my red. God. Thank you for prioritizing a new color controller, uh, Sony, rather than making the NVMe slot that you put inside your console actually work. Thank you. My God. I, I, I pre-ordered that red one. I'm so happy I bought into this ecosystem for another like, third straight uh, generation. Y'all are the best. I can't believe it. I'll, it I'm, is kind of embarrassing. It's a little embarrassing. I'm sure y'all will provide a 1440p support next, so everybody that has been playing computer games for the past 12 years can use their monitors with your console and have it render properly. But thanks. Damn. How do you feel about the controller colors, though, Blake? <laughs> <laughs> do you like the black controller or the red one? Yeah, no, black controller is very original for Sony, man. I, I, who would have thought they would have went there? It's crazy. I have a feeling you don't really care. I don't fuck with this thing behind me at all. <laughs> if baseball wasn't on here, oh my god! You should sell it. You have hella stickers. I really so should. It's shit. worth more now, actually, because I have one, two, three, four, five Supreme stickers on here. 
I told you it was. And if I take this to uh, the neighborhood rolling 60s, then it's worth even more. You're getting robbed. <laughs> <laughs> they are not paying you currency. That, yeah. that works. <laughs> They're <are> definitely <laughs> robbing me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just got to have a shooter outside. You're good. I'm just, I bought a victory lap on vinyl. Oh, I didn't. I put it in my cart. I'm, ca- I'm not cap. I'm capping. I didn't buy it. I, I put it in my cart because yeah. I didn't got paid yet. I'm gonna buy it today. Uh, but yeah. Victory Lap, they just released it on vinyl, so I'm gonna buy that again. No, for the first time. Vinyls. I, I buy vinyls just because the covers be hard as fuck. Yeah, I don't own a I, disc player. I, I don't even be listening. I need to oh. get one. I own one, but we hardly ever use it. The covers are just tight. Yeah, so it's, it's you get the artwork in big form. That's what I want. Oh no! Yeah, you should buy a, a a vinyl player though. That should it sounds so much better. It it takes up a lot of space. My mom has one. Like, I don't. You have so much space. You have a I don't five hundred square foot house. What are you talking about? I'm a, no, I don't. This is actually my whole entire house. Like in this, the camera <laughs> yeah. you can see right now. This is everywhere we live in. Yo, Blake this is my daughter's been bed so behind much me. on this podcast, bro. That's crazy. all right, man. My poor dog is like sleep over here, like pressed up against the wall. It's, mm. it's just sad in here. You've right changed. Now. You've changed your view. Four different times. Look look where we have to store our mattress that we sleep on right now before I go to sleep. <laughs> we don't have any space in yeah, here, bro. That's a long hallway. That's crazy. No, nah, don't that's the landlord. <laughs> hallway yeah. hallway so long it lost light halfway down it. No, that's, that's not even our space anymore over there. Anyway, uh Blake, you posted a, a an article about uh, video games being more important than music. Yeah, man. Please they, expound. Please expound. Um it's become a bigger industry. I think last year they said 122 billion. Last year was the video game industry. Like, um, all, all switches. Pretty insane. Because if it, music is, um, well, it's 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 music is like inescapable, right? Like if you watch TV at all, um, the show you watch probably has music playing on it. Someone's mm-hmm. gonna pay for that. If you watch, there's a commercial. Someone's gonna pay for the music on that commercial. Um, and then of course, like you got the radio, you have streaming services, which is like ubiquitous with everything. Like nowadays, like everybody has music streaming. Um, it's, it's everywhere. Right. But like games are still not everywhere. Um, so for it to be worth more now, um, it just, I kind of just says a lot about, um, the people that play them and their, their willingness to spend money. Um. And kind of, I guess they they have crossed over some too, because like uh, this article starts off talking about like last year um, AOC streaming, playing Among Us with um, she had I think, oh. what's her name? She had um, Elon from Minnesota with her. Elon Omar. Yeah, and then she had a bunch of like the, yeah. the top like uh, Twitch streamers on the thing with her too. It's like yeah. So it, it, that, it that was gonna be my point about as far as like the access to it, like Among Us is free. Fortnite is free. Like mm-hmm. the biggest, the biggest games are free, and I feel like in our heads it's like, oh, I'll spend four dollars here, two dollars here, a dollar mm-hmm. here, mm-hmm. and not realize that I just bought seven thousand dollars in V Bucks. Oh, uh, that's a lot. Fortnite, we'll say sixty like, to eighty dollars, maybe. Yeah. Are you a kid that plays Fortnite a uh, hundred dollars nah, a week? No, no but yeah, like to Shakur's point, I am an adult that plays and will be the show. And if you caught me on the right week, the day after I got paid, and I'm like, you know, just sitting looking at the stubs packs, I'll maybe throw sixty dollars to you. Yeah, and we've all done like pack up with some boxes. Oh, I made a new, uh, I made a new my player on two K. Okay, I'll drop the forty for the fourth time this year. See, like I, after I paid sixty, I don't. I only buy VC usually once. Yeah, but you you reliably play other games like more so than you play yeah, sports games. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, now if you're playing, yeah, because I know some people that like they have like five my players. Yeah, they be spending hell of money. <laughs> oh yeah. shit! <laughs> but yeah, so it's like, but also when you are, like going through the PS5 list of like I've looked at Blake, he's putting like thirteen hundred hours a year into fucking yeah, the game. Getting his money's like, worth. Yeah. You're getting your money's worth, nerd. Uh, yeah, just a fuck ton of. <laughs> so it's like. It makes sense, but with with music, there's a music is interesting because like if we have if I have Apple Music and I just stream all day every day, I don't. How does that look compared to me putting money into V Bucks? Cost you a lot Fortnite. less. For sure, you, it's hard to spend sure. more money in music than it is to spend in games. Yeah, like music is becoming freer. 
as we go along. Like, I don't have to illegally yeah. download shit anymore, but it's feel freer. Like, if a Drake album comes out tonight or tomorrow, Nicki Minaj just put out a, a, a new project tonight. It's didn't not even pay new. A dollar for it. Not even new. Yeah. Yeah, she re released it, so, yeah. J. Cole put out new music, didn't pay a dollar for it because I pay. Uh, <laughs> I pay for Apple Music, so the shit just downloaded itself on my phone. So yeah. it, it, it's an interesting like compare and contrast of like video games are bigger because we are nigga. Everybody bought a Switch last year for one hundred and eighty dollars. They bought Mario Kart. They bought Zelda. They bought yeah. Mario Party or whatever. Versus, I have Apple Music and I'm listening to music fourteen hours a day. I have heard that uh, what these on the topic of like because yeah if if you got to spend less to get into the music service than you do like to playing games something like that um so that when you hear that that sounds like oh my god it must be hard to like make money as an artist but what I've heard some of these streaming services do I don't know which ones if one of us all of them um what whatever percentage you were of that streaming service's total streams for the year. That's how they decide what they pay you, and it's still the, the um, yeah, basically that. I, I think that's what they were trying to get it to be. I don't think that's. Oh, they didn't get it there. Is. Okay, yeah, no, that's no, because I think they were. <laughs> I guess this will kind of lead us into the next point. They're talking about that on the Joe Budden podcast last week mm-hmm. or two weeks ago. Of like, oh For yeah, sure, it's an awesome. artist kind of like pay into a bucket. And everybody gets paid out of it. And they're like, well, Drake is probably responsible for 80% of people who have Apple Music. Nah. Should he get 8-1% of his stuff or whatever the case may be? I'm yeah. making up a number. Whatever. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's what they're trying to do so that more people can get more money. But, like, yeah, Drake and Ski Master Slump God shouldn't have a nearly an equal cut, even though they might have... A similar amount of streams or something like that. Drake and E40. Yeah. Why would you do that? Why would you bring up E40 in that? I got to represent Antonio, man. He's CB. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 Tyrell Henley, uh, stream E40 just as much as I stream Drake. So, Cap. in my book, they're pretty much the same. Cap. No, it's I not possible. It's, it's not. It's not plausible and it's not Cap. So, figure it out. Okay. You know what's out? I'm not doing this with you on the podcast. Don't, don't I do listen this. to a lot of you for you. I listen to Club Paradise a lot, too. I I don't know any of the words of Club Paradise. <laughs> not a song I listen to. Controller? Could have got me there. Controller. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, JB Pie. Hey, RIP the JBP podcast. <laughs> they coming back, bro. Yo, Joe really fired niggas in the mid. How you get fired on your day off? That's insane. They, they really asked for it. Me. They fucking asked for it. Where are y'all stand on this? Let's you, hear this. You. So I did listen to that whole uh that last episode today from that link you had posted. Mm-hmm. I mean, because I'm a Patreon subscriber and I pay for their content. But um, I kind of seem like I kind of see what Joe was talking about. Where like you can't show up to your fucking job talking about oh. Uh, come see about these hands, boss. Multiple occasions, and uh, expect to keep your job. Fucking like he he was gonna let them use like their footage that he gets that he pays for like the camera crew and all their stuff to put to their own channels, but they never did anything with it. He like suggested them to do shows and all this stuff. I was like yeah. damn, yeah, and uh, that like, don't make sense. The come see about this hands, boss. Like that that seemed like at first was like part of the show, like. Oh, we're listening to friends talk, and this is friend. If the three of us start talking about beating each other up, like that's what it seemed like. Obviously, that wasn't the case, and I don't know if that was communicated. You could tell that was kind you, of like, yeah, yeah. It, we can't we can't talk about how yeah. we interpreted it because you got to talk about think yeah, about what 100%. they had going on behind the scenes and what Joe For sure. and all of them knew was happening, and he's saying this to me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I feel like Roy and Maul didn't either feel like or realize they were the worker when they were the worker. Like, you are talking to your boss like your friend because your boss is your friend, and you think that you are a boss here, and you are not. So you're still moving like you are, and he's like, nigga, why are you... Excuse me? Like, I'm the boss. So I don't... 
and again, we're not there. We didn't have the conversation. It seemed like either conversations needed because when they came back, they said like, we should have talked about this before. We should have done this before. We should have nah. done this sooner. I think they should have had a conversation that sounded like, can you guys check yourself before you wreck yourself? And then they wrecked themselves. No, nah, I I don't know if that conversation was had. So, um, I've <laughs> I've been arguing with people on Reddit about this for the last two days. <laughs> of course, yeah. Oh. I haven't listened to the last episode. I'm going off of the last 400 episodes that I listened to, not right. this most recent one. Okay, so I'm not I'm not trying to shit on your point, Tyrell, because your your point is your point that is it deserves to live the way that it's going to live. He's uh, shit all over my point. No, the, <laughs> the dog. The, the point is like you got to realize like when we are hearing the episode. Just like, you know, like, when we do this podcast, like, there's stuff that has to happen beforehand. Like, we have, like, sort of, like, Facts. our pre-production isn't as yeah, serious. Like, it's, it's Google Docs or whatever. But um, Damn, it in order, I know it should be, but in order for us to, like, get on here and, like, talk and have things flow, like, for this episode to be good as this one was today, I feel like um, it takes, like, us working beforehand and us, like, kind of, like, knowing the shit's going on and stuff like that. So um, when you get the JBP and, like, you're hearing them talk to you and stuff like that, and it sounds like an organ- organic flowing conversation it's it's not just because they all walked into that room and they're having a good day. It's because <laughs> shit happened beforehand, and um, yep. that's what this episode was. It was a lot of like us finally getting to hear like what was happening outside of this and what was not happening outside of this for them to get to where they were. And it from Joe's perspective, it seems like Rory and Maul um, basically were just showing up to the podcast and recording, and that was it, right? And yep. um. And that that's it, it had a value, right? Because like Rory and Molly, we enjoyed them on the show. They were fun. They were entertaining, um, and it it was part of why we came back every single week. But if that's all that you're doing, and this thing is going from um, just being like a show that was whatever to something that signed to Spotify, and like he's trying to make it into a brand and trying to make it into a business, and like you have other people that work for you now, um, and you are in front of millions of people every single week, it's clearly become something more than you should you should take a bit more serious, you know? And yeah, they and definitely, they, never did. they, they definitely never did, but they kept on asking for more and kept on acting like they were being treated yeah. wrong. Um, when in reality, like they had a seat that they were getting paid for every single week to sit in front of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that they sh- probably should have parlayed that into something else for themselves on their own. Like when Shakur was talking about, um, Rory got offered the, he could have the video or whatever. He said the same thing to Maul and stuff too. It's like to go do whatever you want to do with it. In reality, if 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 you were um, this actual talented individual who had taken advantage of the spot that you had, you would have probably turned that into a show of your own and went with that somewhere else and bring your own people on to talk to them and stuff like that. Because you got to think like um, Savon, who's there with them in the room, right? Like he's um, I don't know, Joe. Yeah, he's 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 basically he was a nobody. He's the same thing that Rory basically was, where he he only we when only he know. Got him. Yeah, we only know about Rory. We only know about Maul. We only know about Savon because of Joe Budden. Um, but Savon took that opportunity and made his own show, then brought his friend to work on Joe's show, and that's the co-host of his show. And it's like he's using that basically as free advertising without even saying anything about it because you know his name, and you know he has his own podcast, and they talk yeah. about it sometimes. And it's like you, I can see how I. Can, I obviously agree hearing that broken down like y'all what what were y'all doing and but I can also see how they were like yeah this is our show like it was the Joe Budden podcast with Roy and Maul I could see how that only happened with, from them complaining and Maul, yeah for it sure. no, 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 no. I, I agree though. but I can see how in their head they're like the Joe Budden podcast with Roy and Maul we have our own drop this is our show this is the today show like this is Regis and Kelly. Like, this is whatever. They're thinking, like, yeah, this is us. And then it's like, if he's having conversations of, like, yo, should you, y'all want to go do anything else? Do you want to be anywhere else? And Rory would occasionally go on other podcasts. I heard Maul on one other podcast anywhere else ever. And don't really know if I'd want to hear, don't really know if I'd want to hear either of them on another show by themselves. Not by themselves. So it makes sense. Yeah. So it, it, it makes sense. I could see why they're mad, and I could see why Joe fired them. If they're like, yo, I'm not coming to work because you disrespected me, take a couple of episodes off. And that's where I go back to, like, I think they didn't realize 
this ain't the homie. This is my boss. I just don't understand, like, how, like, I don't know, like, from, from, from them being basically nobody to being somebody who TMZ is yelling at when they're walking out of a club. Yeah. For sitting next that to was, Joe. Like, the, yeah, the opportunity only exists because Joe had the show. Yeah. I don't, think they, look, I don't think they looked at it like that. It's easy to not look at it like that. It's, it's easy to... Maul had... Again, me not being a nigga who has that. Rory, having worked at uh, record labels, putting out an album, has as manages maybe Emotional Oranges. I don't know what No, he, he was regular that. as like, hell before this. And he, he sure. probably is going to go back to that. But thinking like, yes, I'm here because of me on this podcast, which is the Joe Podcast <laughs> podcast with, with Rory. And you got to hear the episode, bro. No, but, yeah. but I'm saying like, it, I think it's very easy from the, without hearing it with, from their perspective to think it's the Joe Budden podcast with Rory and Maul. I, I am a part of the reason why it's here. I, I am uh-uh. as big as him. But like, but Blake, didn't he, he said that like, he's the one that's invested like all his money. He pays for like the, I'm sure. yeah. He said like when they weren't stuff. making any money, like when the Spotify deal ended, he's he the one that decided to start paying people. So it all came out of his pocket. He said, let's, yeah. let's pay people like we're getting paid. And we're going to make this place like a place to be. And that's going to be our value. It's going to go from there. Um, and the, he said, like, the Joe Budden podcast with Rory Amal, like, the name only came to be that when they signed to Spotify because Rory Amal begged for him to, for it to be that. Exactly. But the so show was never guys, that. Because if you, you ever go you back guys, to it, You guys knowing niggas. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, no, I don't. Yeah. Like, like, that's, if they're that's not what I'm saying. For, Think like, of it for not being knowing the, people and the how equipment. people work. Yeah. I'm not, okay, so I guess my we're, I understand how someone could get to that point. I guess I should say that. I'm That's saying you are so yes. wrong for being at that point. <laughs> yes. I, I. That's why I'm saying I understand why they're mad. Is Joe right for firing them? 100%. Yeah. If I'm like, hey, I'm blank and I work at the blank store, I make you this much money. Nigga, you're not the reason this store is open, though. Yeah. You, you can be fired and replaced mm. today. I don't know if they can be fired and replaced. They can. But you can be fired and replaced today. Because the, the ice and this shit worked immediately. It did. It did. <laughs> I didn't it, like it as much, but it did. Because that's what if if you if we will name this podcast later and shit like that when like Ice would just show up sometimes or whatever, that's what it was. It was Joe bringing his friends on, just talking to them. Yeah, yeah. Ice. I think Ice is different too from those guys because Ice has one hundred twenty thousand followers on Twitter and mm-hmm. has like kind of been a, a entity of his own for so long ish. Like. I could listen to Joe and I used to be on a show. Ish, I don't really care for. And it's, I like the perspective. Who is this guy? But I understand. I understand. Yeah, but like, yeah, like I like I followed him on Twitter since fucking 2010. Like, yeah. Ice has been an entity of his own and has hella followers. Has his own. He's Ice is bringing people with him, and that's kind of probably I'm sure the point Joe was making of like Joe. Maul and Roy didn't bring anything to no, the podcast. Like, turn this up. seat into something and we all grow together. Yeah. Don't just use Ice the seat is, to be in the seat. Ice is bringing 100,000 people to that seat. Yeah. Some of those people obviously probably already listen to the podcast. There's, there's a big Ice overlap is, for sure. And yeah. Since <laughs> it's probably a celebrity of his own on his own. Period. No, nah, it's just. Yeah, I, it's I, interesting, um, especially now doing a podcast, and it's like, could you imagine if one of us was just like, yeah, like I'm gonna put all the money into this and do all these things, and everybody else is like, okay, no, yeah, like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> imagine, imagine if like one of us was actually famous, like imagine like if if it was us three and it was the the fourth person on the, of the pod or the fifth person oh, on the podcast, right, bitch. I'm just saying, you like a person that actually has, you just said me, you're. I can't say why people might know you because then I get in trouble. So um, imagine yeah, if it, if the other person was like slash. was like IT or something though, right? Yeah. Or even um, let's go like way lower level of fame. Like if it's like Scott, like we was high school football with, right? But like he made it to some point where a lot of people from across the nation, across the world, saw his name, knew his name, and if they see his name pop up again, they're just gonna go check out what he has for whatever reason it is, right? Um, if all of us just show up and reap the benefits of standing next to him, like for 
six years like that's kind of fucking nuts if we don't like necessarily turn our opportunity to anything else like that you yeah, would yeah, probably yeah, need to, yeah you, like if, if you don't turn that anything else like you're you're lazy as hell like to ask the the person who everyone knows you because of for more like that's like what are you doing? Like, and so I'm 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 looking at this from not listening to the episode. I'm assuming Joe was telling them you need to do something else. He gave, really... he gave him my piece. He gave him my piece. Like when he told like more yeah, about okay. the clothing thing or like uh, shit like that. It's like make you your gotta listen, content. Tyra. Yeah, it's and like then we probably okay. talk about that. Makes sense. He was like being all generous. Is like why would I do something else? But if he's telling them like make us some more money, and they were just no, like, nah, yeah, because the, the issue was ownership, right? And it's like if 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 I have my own YouTube channel with like two whatever million followers on it, and this is where the network customers our podcast associated, like Rory asked him for um, splits from the YouTube, right? And Joe's music's on his YouTube. So it's like Joe had fans before all this started, before he started doing the podcast, and like he, he just mm-hmm. talked to people like on like Justin TV or whatever the fuck, or even just Twitter. Um, like, how are you going to get splits from like people just getting traffic on the YouTube? Like, all my stuff is here. Like, I'm not giving you any yeah. of this. Like, there's no way for me to properly split this up with you. Um, but what, like, like Jamal said, like, I'll give you the video for the podcast. You can do it on your own channel and do whatever you want with it. And then also, um, if you wanted to, like, you, like, he probably could have started his own show. I'll put it on my YouTube and you can get the splits from your show on my YouTube and own, have complete ownership from it. Like, yeah. why would he said like other places would no place would give him no deal like that? Like, mm-hmm. allow you to use like our footage from like what we record on oh, no. your own shit. Yeah, yeah. Just well, cause no. of, you know, off love, nobody right? else would do that. But it's like you already have a platform that can give you get put you in front of millions of people. All you need to do is create something and I'll put it up here. And it's, it's you have a bigger audience than you could ever ask for as a new creator, which is hilarious because he could have been in the, the Joe Budden podcast network and thinking of like Mandy. Who is on a podcast of her own? Karen Civil doing her own thing. It is on on the yeah. Karen Civil brand of your own doesn't need him. You have a podcast there. <laughs> Rory could have just had the like you two extra days a week you podding, and it's the Rory and Sam podcast or the Rory and anything DJ Academics podcast. Rory whatever. and um, like, you know the dude from um the is do say who's a partner? Chris Chris so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Roofy podcast probably probably uh, don't get that w- one off. Roy and Duke, whatever. Yeah. The steal of... But yeah, no, I no, hearing you guys break it down, that makes perfect sense. I can see why you gotta listen to the episode. they got fired. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, I listen I saw no, it's, it's... there was I saw there was twenty five minutes on my podcast app and it was like, Oh yeah, go to Patreon. I was like, I don't know if I want to do that. You guys posted the free link, still don't really want to do it. Yeah. But you guys gave me all I need I listened to, to it today at work. Even if you listen to the, the academics uh link that uh Shakur posted, he basically plays sure. almost all of it on there. And for... that shit was so funny. Yeah. Academics is a fucking character. Yeah. But... But yeah, he's like a, another person that like turned the opportunity that he had next to Joe into something else. Not that he needed Joe for that, but it's like you you take what you have. Like Andrew Schultz turned like the opportunity next to Charlemagne yeah. into his own brand. Like you, Facts. you, you, you got to realize where you are. He didn't like. I don't know yeah. what he asked Charlemagne for, but it's like you. Yeah, you got to take it down like that. Everybody who's been like Wax is his own kind of Wax is his own. Yeah, he waxes well. his own podcast now. He has his own brand. Like you got to <laughs> Yo, take the opportunity. Who, I've been listening to that Wax podcast and so awesome, man, either, two I'm sure Brilliant idiots fans have. Yeah, and he's probably still going. He probably he has his own family. No, it, it's still, it's still on there. I still get them damn. I still get the messages like, "Are you still interested?" I'm like, "Not really." <laughs> no. Yeah, Shout you, out to Lord. damn. That's Dude, crazy. He was just enjoying yeah. like going on tour and like getting like to put in tight rooms because you know Joe Budden and not like, <laughs> like oh maybe I can get put yep. in room because I'm Rory or because I'm all. Like, and I I can for sure see why people got there because that's the like the rich friend thing. Like I have a rich friend and he's rich, so I'm rich. I would just think people whose lives are like not so. Um, tied to w2s like that that are in that creative space like as their their main source of income would probably be able to see things a bit more clearly but but they told us like i don't care about potting i don't want to do blah i don't want to do blah so they probably looked at joe telling them to do that like you need to go pod more pod more and they're probably like nah there's definitely other things that they could have done anything but they're probably looking at it like you need to pod more like ball being able to call up all the griselda dudes and all these nba players like that could have been something on its own. Fam! You can get KD and Julius Randle on the phone. Damian every... Lillard, you got him at the podcast? Bro! Yeah. yeah. Trevor yeah. Reza a bunch they... of times? Yeah. 
I would, yeah, they fumbled the bag because I'm sure none of that's going to be on the JBP, like the Joe Budden Podcast Network. And they don't got that person no more. They're yeah. going to keep on yeah. getting Rosa Acosta and like people that were hot on Twitter Jeez. in 2013. Yeah, yeah it, sure. it'll be interesting where both sides go from there because Rory's final tweet about it was like, I'll get to the messy shit later. Where? Where? Where are you going to do that? You think Drake Champ's going to call you back? To, to the Rory podcast? Rory. The Rory. The Rory podcast. Yeah, I don't know, man. Sheesh. I, I'm, I'm Sheesh. to be honest, like, I, and I'm not really interested in hearing either of them on their own. But I say that oh. now before they've done anything, so maybe, maybe things will change. I would, but. I would listen to Rory maybe in a different space. I don't want to. I don't know. To talk about anything anywhere else. Yeah, like I feel like they're all good together. I don't know if I'd really want to hear them by themselves. They, 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 and I'm no, not, I'm, like I'm, I'm not gonna say together. they're all good together because we all spent the last like year complaining about how they weren't that good together. But it's because this was going on though. Yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure. Like the podcast was definitely better because like I, shit, I was listening. Yeah, I was listening when they had fucking Rosenberg and old girl yeah, on there. Same. And I same. definitely like wasn't like a, the biggest fan of it, but it was like it definitely got more entertaining. I'm saying like Rory and Mo. My man. boy in Germany had to tell me to come back to it because I was like, man, I listened to that. Sorry, it was not the jam. Um, Dude, but then when Marissa got fired, I listened to that first episode. I was like, man, what's going on here? And then it's basically been on since. Yep. Dude, that was a long ass time ago. Cause I, that was like when I first started working at the post office. I was listening she did to 77 shit. episodes, she said. That's crazy. Yeah. I feel like that wasn't that long. Oh, yeah, I guess you no, did. I've been at the post office for like seven years. No, yeah, yeah, you have. No, I thought about. T- I'm thinking of like, yeah, where I was. Then. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh-huh. Sheesh. All right, are we doing this bracket today? Because goddamn, we're at two hours and twenty minutes. No, nah, we can. We'll, we'll, on, we'll do the bracket on its own separate episode. I feel okay. like it's hard to do the bracket uh, baked into other things. No, nah, we <laughs> we potted the fuck out this bitch, boy. We did. And Craig can't hang out the whole time. Hey, shout we out Craig. We didn't play any shout music. That's why he didn't leave. Yeah, we didn't mention Beyonce. <laughs> Uni- Universal. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, big quick, quick thing. What y'all think about J. Cole album? Y'all like it? Fucking fire, boy. Try me. I'm fucking with it. Yeah. With it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's probably like the first J. Cole project, like besides what, Born Center? I'm like, oh shit, this is hard as fuck. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I think like Forest Hills Drive, I was like, all right, this is cool. Mm-hmm. What's after Forest Hills Drive? KOD, right? Mm hmm. I was like, right. I'm, like, nah, I'm fucking with this one tough, though. Mm-hmm. I'm fucking with this one. Yeah, this shit's tight. What about you, Tyro? You know, I'm fucking with it like that? Nah, I think I need I think I think need to listen to it in a different place. I was listening <laughs> to it on my drive home this morning. The, like, the first song was cool, and then it it was just okay. The beat, the beats are fucking hard. He has yeah, he's, he's hard. not making all his beats so, no more, right? No, he is. Low-key thing I... Yeah, oh, he's making all the beats. Oh, y'all still? I, I forgot y'all. Like, y'all on the uh, the white man's platform, Apple Music. You don't come to the title. You get the credits. I wouldn't look at him anyway. Uh, I think I need, I, I'm gonna listen huh? to it in like the gym or something where I can like really focus on the music. Cause Did I was listening on the right title? Home and it was, He sold. Uh, he still has a controlling interest in it or something like that, or he still has a large interest, more than uh, any black person has in Apple. So if you want to really oh, get yeah, down no. to the specifics, you know, yeah, we don't own a lot of shit. Trying to break us down. That's crazy. Wow! Look at Craig. Look at Craig. Look at you. Crap's a cool. Alright, so I'm guessing I'm more done. <laughs> yeah, fuck J. Cole, bitch ass nigga. Wow. Too bad this stream is live on Dreamville.com. Nah, Yo. live on YouTube. That's hilarious. Jamal, you should have just let us end the episode. You wanted to bring up J. Cole, you fucking dyke. That's crazy. I'm a dyke. Man. Right, video people. Uh we're punching here. Oh, we're shit. out. But um, yeah, if Craig quit. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Um, we'll be back next week, man. Peace. Peace.